everybody. Welcome to yet another episode of This Is My Bourbon Podcast. I'm your host, Perry. After five long years, I'm still here, but with me are my two co-hosts, the current ones, at the very least. Swan and Eric, the Whiskey Butte. Boom. Guys, Goes the dynamite. Five years, man. Five years. It's crazy. Um, whew. I don't want to get emotional yet. I got to get more whiskey in me before we get emotional. <laughs> you can get emotional. Yeah, I'm going to See wait. how emotional you can get um, right now. Do well, it. here's the thing. Do I want to make reference to it or just let it kind of be? The skin? My this, skin? This, no. This. Your skin. My skin. Oh, okay. You are. <laughs> <laughs> I skin, you skin, we all skin. For, we're, wait, we're lost skin talk in the in the pre in the interim, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But uh, just tell them what's going on. Well, I, I Uncle Rico, <laughs> I shaved, I shaved my my beard down to a mustache, and I have absolutely no self confidence <laughs> right now. I uh, so it, it looks like I'm going through a midlife crisis. Better you really like Top Gun. It didn't quite work out. Oh, I'm that's not a good sure. one too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or you like vans with no windows. Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> just, it just really it, doesn't look that bad. I'll be honest. I mean i I don't I don't think it does either. But I just like I just miss having my face covered. <laughs> that's yeah. I know the feeling. Yeah, I was there. I, I was there. I know you do, but the thing uh, is, like, I, I know my, that it's took my lashes. I know that it's back. coming, coming back real hard here. So, oh yeah, hard, baby. <laughs> I had but, that, hey, uh, I had that a little bit, even when I was just wearing masks for like ten hours a day, and then I went oh, to yeah. not, and I was just like, oh, "What do I do? Right. What's going on here? What do I do? What do I do?" Uh, well, if this is your first time listening to the podcast, thank you so much for being here. But if you have been enough. with us, yeah, no kidding, right? Five whole years. But you have, if you have been with us since day one and you're still tuning in, uh, God bless you, first of all. Uh, but also, thank you so much. Uh, this has been the absolute best five years of my life. Uh, and I've been married for six, so. You do the math. Yeah, right. No, that's not true. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> Let me just dig my my own grave right here at the beginning of the podcast. By the end of this, I'm going to be served papers. <laughs> uh, but if you've not subscribed yet, please do so. You can uh, check out the video version of this on YouTube. If you want to see what I look like without a beard, you can go do that. YouTube.com slash this is my bourbon podcast. It's really sexy, honestly. It's I'm kind of just staring at it. I mean, when you start That's like fine. touching it with your fingers and stuff like that, yeah. <sighs> uh, all right, all right. We're already done with the pregame chats. I know, I know. Yeah, I was yeah, feeling yeah. some sort of way. I yeah. don't know. Um, <laughs> but also, go follow us on social media at my bourbon pod. You can follow Swan at Swan TBF, and Eric is at Whiskey Mutant. Pretty much just uh, on on the uh, the Instagrams there, but. Yeah. Uh, also, support the show on Patreon. Patreon.com slash my bourbon podcast. Little as a dollar a month. Five dollars a month gets you bonus content, though. Hundred dollars uh, a month. Perry will glue the hair that's in his garbage can back on his face. Yes. Yes. I heard Gorilla Glue yeah. get mentioned. I get, mm -hmm. I get a little crazy. Yeah. Do you think that my beard would grow out still if it was covered up with extra hair and glue? There mm -hmm. is literally only one way to find out. <laughs> I think that's um, some science that you need to test out. How about this? If you pay for Mythbusters. if you pay for an entire year's worth of uh, uh, of Patreon, Patreon at the one hundred dollar tier up front, <laughs> I will consider doing that. <laughs> We are listen, Perry. I don't think you're putting your your brain power to work here. We're so close. <laughs> To Halloween, you could just be in a costume from now until the 31st and then tell everybody, oh, we were celebrating Halloween at work today. Hell, you could go ahead and start being Santa Claus. Nobody'd oh, say a thing. This, 
Like a, rever- the- like a reverse Santa Claus? Nobody would say a thing if Perry was Santa Claus from now until Christmas. Yeah, I, haven't even, gotten, I haven't even gotten my turkey costume out yet. Where that? Does it got a beard? It's got Does- it's got the goozle thing. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Swan started out with Perry, you're not using your brain, and I'm trying to figure out if Swan knows what's <laughs> happening. <right now. laughs> Just saying, get get into some costume, man. That's just wear a Santa Claus costume the, for the, the fucking word, forty the days. Word, the word vomit. <laughs> just Nobody get in there, man. Notice. Nobody I, noticed. Nobody noticed Santa Claus. Know, you know, Eric. Now that you bring it up, I realized you were quiet for a really long time before you said something again. I, just, I was I, just like, it was just I like feel, I was trying to put it together. I feel like you could. I feel like you could rock the Santa Claus from now until the twenty fifth of December. So, are you saying that, like? I would I would wear the fake beard and that would be the way that I cover up the mustache. Yeah, just you know, you're just until the beard grows back in, just just go full Santa Claus. Get your little Santa Claus beard or something. Find a and costume. No one would say a... anything about that. Nobody I would say, say a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody would say a word. Not, Not a thing about it. Not a thing. I think you got it. I think you got it. You could rock it. Hey, we've struck we've struck oil. Stop digging. <laughs> yeah, quit while you're ahead. Great ideas. <laughs> Tim Bip. Man, oh goodness so, gracious. Oh, well, we uh, we normally start the show out with a segment called Flying Blind. Uh, this has been going on for almost as long as the podcast has been going on. Uh, and I have a little blind flight for these two guys. Oh. It's been a while. Uh, three three bourbons. Three bourbons. Okay, all, so all they're bourbons. Up. They are bourbons. Swan say they're bourbons, so we get our point. They're bourbon. Bourbon. Got Ding. it. Ding. <laughs> a little counter. So is there? In the corner. So is there a like um, a theme to this, or are these just you? You just grab these because you were like, I want them. No, with there's, the blind a, there's a theme. But I need to see. I, I, I want to see if you guys can figure it out without okay. me. Okay. Just okay, okay, okay. straight up telling you. Okay. Okay. All right. Ooh. Doesn't smell real proof heavy, but man, I, you're using a different kind of Glen, but like mine, it's all it's super oily. Yeah. Yeah, I grabbed that extra one. It's just black. You can't see it, but it smells. It is, it is very oily. It though. smells like Melted Werther's original, like. Oh, that tastes so good. Ooh. Is that Heaven Heal? Wow. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's bakery. Like, it's yeah. it's, it's that bakery. Was, that like, was incredible. <laughs> I'm not even, like, it hit me. As soon as I tasted that, I was like, that's Heaven Hill. Man, well done. Yeah, I was, I was thinking it was Heaven Hill or Barton, one of the two, but yeah, Heaven Hill makes sense. Oh, that is delicious. That can't be. Oh, is that the seven year? You are so close. It's not the white label, is it? The it's, bottom it's, of the bond? No, yeah, it's the six year white label. I was going to say that it's maybe 100 proof. It yeah. doesn't taste even 100 proof, though. Not really, no. Oh, my gosh. That's better. I've not had that in so long. And that's I know, like, right? I think this is uh, this is from my the last bottle that I have of it too, baby. No, yeah. well, daddy liked that. <laughs> Put that in my skin. Um, damn, I'm still good. trying to figure out whether or not people are going to hear the thing that you are referring to. <laughs> so, <laughs> listen. Patreon, this, sign gotta, up. Yeah, sign up to the Patreon, and maybe you'll you'll understand what Eric is making reference yeah, to there. You got the Patreon part of it; it'll all click. You'll get it. B two is wildly different, but wildly so good on the nose. Yeah, it's kind of rye, licoricey. Yeah, it's a, it's a much softer palate though than A is. Ooh. You getting almost like a Fruit Loops thing on it? I was going to oh, say I there's like that. some there's some like not licorice. I, I said licorice, but I meant Twizzler, like this cherry. Yeah, and yeah. almost like artificially uh-huh. cherry. Uh huh. Man, two is so good. Oh. Okay. What is that? Mmm. Yeah, it is soft. Under a hundred proof. 
Is it weeded? No and no. Oh, that's more than that. It does not taste like it's got much proof on it. It's so well, it's also soft. it's also not more than a hundred proof. It's a hundred proof. It's a hundred proof. <laughs> it's a bottled in bond. Okay, 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 okay. I want you to really dig into your brain here. Is that another yeah. Heaven Hill bottled in bond? It is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. This this tastes more like Evan Williams. Ding. <laughs> Cause there's this different no, there's like this different thing between like the bakery Heaven Hill that you get and then like Evan Williams like white label and stuff what, like that. What I get with Evan Williams bottle and bond, I I tend to it it tends to go more like charcoaly for me for some reason. There is a note of like dark like smoky yeah kind of thing on there yeah but the fruit is different mm-hmm it's real different yeah it's the artificial cherry and that's that's kind of that difference between like like i was saying the bakery spices and then the cherry like man that's good too Ooh. i haven't had that in forever i like the third it's getting back into that baking spice oh. kind of thing bring it back daddy Daddy's Bakery is back on uh, on the street here. There's a lot of daddy talk this episode. <laughs> Listen, I'd go to Daddy's Bakery. Are you kidding me? Heck yeah, dude. Oh, what is that? That's like that's like the be- that's like the best. That's like both of these together. Did you blend these together? I did not. To? Okay, I did not. Because it smells like Heaven Hilly Bakery, like really good. But then the palate is kind of like bakery with like a drizzle like a fruit or a citrus drizzle on top of like a cookie i i will go ahead and say this one is not heaven hill okay it really does taste like a blend of the two to me yeah is this bottled and bond too yes it is okay the finish on this is is last longer than both of those the finish is so good on this. For me, it smells like Heaven Hill. I don't know if it's because I just had the other two or what, but... It smells very Heaven Hill-like, but it doesn't taste as much like it. Um, it's not so 1792 it's, bottom and bond, is it? It is It is not. Because I've had this, a lot of single barrels of those, and they do is change. This a, is this a Wilderness Trail bottom and bond? It is not Wilderness Trail. Well, so it's not Wilderness Trail. It's not Heaven Hill. It's not Barton, 1792. It doesn't have like an overwhelming spice that I sometimes get on Taylor. It's not Taylor. But yeah, I didn't, I mean, I didn't think it really was, but just thinking of all the bottled and bonds that are released. Mm. Well, I'll tell you this. (laughs) Daddy-like. And and granddaddy like, oh, <laughs> okay. Granddad bonded. It's granddad bonded. So, this is to the to the best of my abilities, a recreation of the very first flight that we ever did on an episode of Ten Bib. I remember that. Oh. The very the very first thing. So I I went back and I. Because I hadn't, I hadn't listened to it in a long time, but it's it's still fun. Like it's very different from what we uh, we do now. But I, I went back and and listened, and uh, the first thing that we ever drank on the show, uh, Curtis and I were drinking Antique One Hundred Seven, and that was the first time he had ever had that. Uh, but then we did. A budget bottled and bond battle uh, for the the rest of the episode, and I I don't have any more of it because they don't make it specifically this way anymore. I uh, but the third bourbon, so Heaven Hill six year and Evan Williams bottled and bond were both in that flight, but the third one was at the time the very old Barton bonded. 
Oh. Which they don't, they have a hundred proof version, but they don't have. The one with the wild, like, a, like banner uh-huh. on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. But they, they don't have a bottled and bond <laughs> version of it anymore. So uh, I went with another budget bottled and bond bourbon, which honestly, I probably, like, if I were to do that now, I would more than likely have gone with, uh, with Granddad Bonded in there. And I probably wouldn't have done two Heaven Hill products together <laughs> because it's two Heaven Hill products. I mean, right, you're right, right. kind of, you know. Hey, they're it, different it, enough, though. I no, mean, they, I, are, they are. They are. very different. Know? And, I mean, the, the, whole, the whole thing about it was, you know, yeah, budget bottle and bond bourbons. And we were, two of us at that time had just gotten out of college and one of us was still in college. So, you know, we were kind of on a, a tighter budget than we are now. So it was just kind of something that we gravitated towards at you that time. You were not time. on a tighter budget. Look at the second episode. What'd you review the second episode? Okay, to be fair. <laughs> to that, be that, fair, that, though. That was, that was the WLW episode. W- episode. <laughs> to be fair, though, <laughs> Curtis Tanner and I split that bottle. Yeah. And, and that, I, was the, that was the only way that we were, we were able to make that work at that point. Like, there was no chance that I would have been able to drop $100 on that bottle <laughs> on, my, on my own. But yeah, you're, you're right, though. I mean, I did kind of put my foot in my mouth <laughs> with, just, that, with just, that assertion. It's just we so can funny. only go up from here, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Bottled in bonds at WLW. <laughs> Yeah, you're you're not you're not wrong about that. So what but. was uh looking back a little bit, what was the first sample, media sample you got sent or somebody sent you to review? Something that you were like, "All right, we got this in the mail or some, like bottle sample whatever." Um Bullet. Bullet. Bullet sent us a just a bottle of their regular Frontier small batch bourbon. I uh, I don't even remember how exactly it it came about but like i started talking with somebody on their their instagram i think um and they were like oh well you know we'll send you a bottle and so yeah i I remember curtis and i reviewed that up in our guest bedroom slash office at our old place in richmond uh which is where i did all my podcast stuff back in the day when we weren't recording in the uh in the living room but (laughs) yeah it's uh i think bullet was was the first i could be i could be wrong but that's the first one that i remember specifically so media media wise at the very least there there could have been a sample that somebody else like you know a friend sent for us to review but I don't I don't know for sure. Yeah. So that's cool. But anyway. Yeah. Uh back then also we, we ranked these. Uh like said which one was our favorite. Uh or which one we would have preferred. Uh, and it was blind back then too. But I at the time, I mean the Heaven Hill six year was my my preferred of the budget bottom of bonds. I have a hard time not leaning towards the old granddad now, though. Three, I mean, one, the, the, three, one, two is my order. Yeah, I'm in the same way. That's exactly where I'm at. Yeah. Three, one, two. I like the high rye. I've gotten to the point now oh, where I, I too. almost prefer a good rye whiskey to bourbon. I believe that. I, I don't doubt that that's where you're at <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right now, Mr. Well, I think it's that finish, Scotch. man, on the granddad. Like, there's just. It's a big part of it for sure. Pawpaw's just hanging out with you for a while. Oh, he's like hanging. It's, yeah, he's hanging down there. I mean, he's got his he's got his basketball and everything. Um. <laughs> it's just, it's like, it's rich. It's got a full, like, body to it and a finish. And I know that some people, when they first get into whiskey, they see those high rye and they, they taste them and they're like, oh, I, I can't do this. Oh, I can't, I can't do this. <laughs> and I don't, I get it. I get it can be aggressive if you're not used to jumping from 80 to 100 and then also taking a grain that's known for being softer to that's going to strangle you a little bit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just, 
I don't know. I didn't have anything to really segue into right there, but <laughs> I'm also like starting to get a little sentimental thinking about uh, everything that we're going to talk about on this episode. But um, you remember yeah. the first episode that I did, Barry? The first episode that you did first was one I was called, on. It was called "This Is My Bourbon Finder," but I don't remember what we reviewed. We, was it the new riff? We were in Kurt's uh, living room. That's right, yeah. And we reviewed a flight of the new 116.8 uh, rare breed, the 112.8. Oh, my gosh. And the, I think the 108.7, the, like the old release. Yeah. I found a little bottle of it, and it was right in that sweet spot of they were transitioning between the 112 and the 116. That's right. Man. Because they still had the old bottle, too, for Rare Breed. Yeah, for a while they put out the old, like the old style bottle. They would put the new proof on it and just change the wrap at the top. Yeah. So they had like a transition bottle that I just, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I straight up chugged that stuff. I loved (laughs) it. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Because, I mean, we, we all came to the conclusion, like, as much as it's cool to have this old bottle, this new one really good <laughs> so yeah. no i re- i remember that for sure yeah. but it's I, fu- it uh, you know what's funny now that you mention that that means that the both of you all your first episodes were wild turkey because mm-hmm. yeah. eric and i because eric and i reviewed russell's 13 yeah on his first episode i didn't even that didn't even click the funny part was, I remember going over and you guys were, I'm not going to say like seasoned and knew 100% kind of where you wanted the show to go, but it was like episode 32, 33, something like that. So you, you knew what you were doing, right? I don't even I'm know over, if it was that far in. Either way, I remember holding the, the rock band mic and I'm like, <laughs> like shaking, <laughs> you know? And, like, breathing into it a little too heavy and, like, moving it in and out for my face and, like, trying to get comfortable on Kurt's couch. Not that he had, like, a bad couch or anything. I'm just, like, nervous, you know? And it was... It, it was interesting. And then I, I got into it and I realized, like, oh, I I know somewhat what I'm talking about. Like, I could learn a few things, but yeah. I feel like I've got it enough under my belt that, like, I can really kind of understand and have a conversation it was episode 13 (laughs) yeah yeah i just i just found it as you were saying that i knew it had a three in there somewhere (laughs) (laughs) you're like 30 episodes in and all this it felt like it (laughs) but no it was it was interesting (laughs) it's yeah i mean like i was kind of saying it's a lot different now than it was (laughs) back back then um I, it's just you know it, it it is a normal and natural evolution for things to not in the same way that you began them uh yeah. it, it, that sounds like we're ending the show we're not um but there's, there's just been a lot of change uh since since episode one and um you know one of the things that i'm i'm very very thankful to we'll get to what we've been drinking in a minute um but one of the things that I'm I'm very thankful for is that despite there has been despite there being all this change and um you know in, internally and, and externally um two things one I you guys the listeners you all not just guys um y'all y'all have always stuck with us like you you have been you have been open to the change that we have had to go through uh for the past 5 years but also that there are people who are willing to jump on when i need them like i mean you you two both are are prime examples of that you know i i needed the you two at very different times in the podcast, but you were both willing to be a part of it and enthusiastic about jumping in when, when I asked. And I mean, that's, I, I feel like that's a pretty rare thing to find with people 
that they would be willing to dedicate that much, as much time as this requires and uh, as, as much energy and patience and, and everything. So I'm, uh, I'm very thankful for, for the both of you all. Thank you. <laughs> early, early, early uh, sentimentality. Thank you, but man. Yeah. Yeah. I've There's something so about you that it. like people just gravitate towards you too. Um, and that's just, I know we're getting, we're still in the, we're getting emotional here, but yeah, it's, you know, it's just you, man. Like it's the, it's the mustache, right? Now. Yeah. I want to get up all in that. <laughs> Even before the mustache, you know, yeah. there's just, you just got a presence dude and you're just fun and you make things fun. And I think that's why me and Swan have fun doing this and that's why we did that. So oh, I've been, I've been picking on Perry since way before the podcast oh yeah oh yeah when swan think, when swan and i were in college together i mean we it, it was just endless <laughs> what was I, the uh, worst what was the, did you ever prank him yeah i think the worst thing that i ever did to him is i found out uh oh my gosh in in 2d art i found out that he had recently put out some work on Bandcamp. It was a full album, <laughs> and the teacher that we had, great lady, liked her, a little eccentric, but just genuinely, like, nice, and she would always play music. It would always be Pandora, something, <laughs> just something to just kind of <laughs> zone out to, and so Perry uh, is not the most um, punctual to some of these classes, right? At least in the first couple of weeks. Perry he was, punctual? Yeah, well, and moving past that. <laughs> But I I looked at her and I was like, hey, you know, the guy that just joined the class late, uh, because you you also came in like a week after classes had started. Uh, Well, that was uh, that was because I didn't like the the professor that I had for that class originally. And so I I transferred over to uh, to Julie's class. Um, God God bless her. She had a horrible, horrible stroke a couple of years ago. She did. Um, She is. Just a fantastic woman, man. She's a wonderful, wonderful person. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. But, uh, I got her to play Perry's album. So he comes in, <laughs> starts putting his book bag down. He's like, uh. <laughs> I was like, I, I think my first reaction was, what is this song? Like, it was not <laughs> anything that she had played in class before, stylistically, too. And then... <laughs> it, it just slowly dawned on me that it was the opening track for that album. I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, I have to sit here and <laughs> the whole pretend album. The were you entire trying to thing. see what people were thinking? Like, were you like watching people's reactions? No, to because I was so anxious. <laughs> I was so anxious. I, it was It was that thing of like... It, it felt like I had forced somebody to listen to my my music or like, you know, like like something like that. And so I felt responsible for it, even though it wasn't my fault that it was playing. Well, the best <laughs> and, part. And so I just felt like I had eyes just stabbing into my back, watching me the entire time, thinking, this is your fault. <laughs> the, my favorite part about it was, is our mutual friend, uh, Maddie, at the time, and I were both like, let's let's do this. It's hilarious. Let's get, let's get in on this. And uh, we had only known Perry for, like, a couple of days. Like, <laughs> <laughs> barely. Barely. Swan was not Swan yet. Swan was still Sean at that time. Yeah. So I just like I'm like this dude that just joined class late. Like, let's just pick on him. He seems cool. <laughs> it was it was. Amazing. I was also I was also I was I because I had I had already been through three years of college. Like that was supposed to have been my senior year had I stayed at my original my original institution. Um. And so I, I already had the disadvantage of being like a little bit older and a little bit more removed from everybody else. And so oh, no, it I just, brought you right back in. Oh, you absolutely <laughs> did. You dragged me back in into the, the depths of hell. Of 
Well, and it was funny too because like we we had a significant amount of classes for the for at least the first semester I was there. So if it had not worked, I would the have first, had like the first three, of two. Yeah, <laughs> I would have I would have had like three classes, and these were studio classes, so like an hour and a half to two hours, yeah. I believe. Of just sitting next to this person who I just publicly humiliated by playing his album in front of people. Had this not worked, <laughs> you know what? What's great though is that I mean, you you all know me now, but even then I was just kind of like roll with the punches. I was like, I just gotta, you know, whatever. <laughs> I feel like this is the is beginning that, of an anime. Like the it does kind the, of feel the, like that. Yeah, the like two the, rivals that become friends. Yeah, this is, this is Goku and Vegeta. Yeah. Yeah. And then there was also the m- many times that I was just like, all right, come over to so-and-so's house. We're going to have a couple of drinks. And everybody is like mingling and having fun. And then there's me sitting on the floor with my back to the couch and most of the fifth of Fireball gone. And I'm just looking at Perry like, fancy seeing you here. And he's like, I've been here for an hour and a half. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> So you do remember that. Because <laughs> yeah. I've been under the impression that you didn't remember that pic- for a long pic- time. <laughs> picturing Swan in a floor holding fireball is amazing to me. Well, so. tell them what you were drinking. You were having wild turkey was, honey. We were we were drinking wild turkey honey and Jim Beam honey at that point. <laughs> so And like loving that. it. And loving life. Dude, I'm you, be put wild tur- you put wild turkey honey in a freezer and you take it out. I've not done that yet. Fuck. Yeah? That's good. Yeah. I'll, have to, I'll have to give that a shot yes. at some point. But you act like I remember the whole thing, Perry. I just remember one time specifically in, in that's, someone's apartment that's looking fair. at you on the steps, and I'm just like, oh, Perry's here. <laughs> <laughs> we only ever went to... The, nobody cares about this. Anyway. <laughs> but uh, anyways... <laughs> <laughs> we, <laughs> the point that of the, was, that the was story a point of is conversation been solely around just each for other for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Perry somehow yeah. looked at the kid that was uh, coddling a bottle of Fireball and said, "Ah, Bourbon Podcast, get him on." And it worked out. You found me Bourbon for a, a long time. You, you're you're I the did. founder. You still are the founder. The son. I, I don't advertise a, that. A few a few special people. A few yeah, special people. I take care of my people. <laughs> Killing me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> First bottle you ever found me was Elmer T. Lee. Damn. Yeah. Elmer yeah. T., some Weller, uh, WLW. How fast does it take you to find an Elmer T. Lee right now? Now? Oh, <laughs> right now? <laughs> no telling. Yeah. But at the time, Challenge. <laughs> I remember uh, I asked, who was it? Chad Chad from It's Bourbon Night was like, I messaged him. I was like, you need anything? And he was like, oh, I'm looking to get this. And I found it in about a month. And I texted Perry at the same time. I was like, do you need one of these? And he's like, yes. I had no clue what it was. I don't even remember what it was either. Not a clue. Because I got a bottle of Weller 12 and that. Like almost at the same time. Uh, I don't think it was Blanton's. Because even, even back in the day, I was never really a Blanton's stan. It was just kind of like nice He's to have there. around. Shoot, what was what was that? I don't know. Maybe it'll come to me later. Um, but <laughs> maybe we should. Podcast. Yeah, we should back up a little bit and ask you guys what you've been drinking recently. Uh, Old Granddad 114 and the Middle West uh, Straight Rye Whiskey, the Pumper. Yes, that Pumpernickel Rye is so good. Have you had it at Cast Strength? No. That's one of the. Uh, that was one of the samples that Middle West. Sent. I would love to do a pick of this stuff it is so fall Dude, me oriented and me too me too i could see this just making a killer cocktail you get it at cast drink make it the highlight of the drink <laughs> surprise surprise i can't ever find anything around here um we're gonna clean that up one day yeah one day we're or we can put the all the bottles on the floor and next time you send us a blind flight instead of picking three things that are somewhat correlated we could just do a ring toss that's a really throws, funny idea. Perry throws a ring, <laughs> three rings back there, and it's just like whatever happens, happens. Yep. I like that idea. I think that's... There's like a half-drunk beer from like a year ago <laughs> sitting there. Do you, guys, do you guys want a really flat and stale Goose Island <laughs> Bourbon County Stout? <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, I think it's good. got a, it's. I think it's got to film a mold on top of it too. <laughs> Get my penicillin and my my sample all in one. I like it. <laughs> There's some wax in this thing. No, there that's not go. wax. Eric, what about you? What about me? Um, I had um, mm, a little bit of my Logic Craig Barrel Proof, the old one, mm, mm-hmm. the other day. I paired it with a Snickers donut. Yeah, it was did. amazing. I tagged Peggy No Stevens in it, get her attention. Um, she liked it. That's all she said. Did nothing, nothing else. So the uh, the battle has begun. Um, then I, uh, uh, me, uh, April, and my oldest. Addison went over to uh, see Perry and Lucy and Eden at Eden's second birthday party, and I had a little bit of curly that Perry brought that I had. I literally have curly sitting over there, but it's like I have like two single barrels over there, and I was I don't know. I haven't went to it in a while, and I saw that sitting there, and so I poured up some curly at a two-year-old's birthday party, and I loved it. (laughs) I mean, I had had a good time. Yes, it was fun. But... Um, I mean, at two years old, it's just as much for you as it is for them, right? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. There was a there was a bouncy house. Yep. For the kids. Um, did little... you partake? I didn't know. <laughs> I thought about it. I I probably would have launched myself into the small creek <laughs> behind my mother in law's house uh, if I had, or one of the children. Probably would have launched one of the children. We thought about actually. that. We were going to jump off the balcony down onto that and do the launch pad. Yeah. yeah. Imagine me launch padding a one-year-old off of that thing. <laughs> Be crazy. One of the little toe-head blonde kids that were yeah. on the... <laughs> that one dad had twins. Yeah, yeah, he was like, ah, he's got twins going everywhere. I was like, let me take care of one of those twins for you. I just launch them away. He's like, finally, I can finish my beer. <laughs> Man, was, I would love to see you at the top of a balcony and be like, I'm sending that sucker to the moon. <laughs> Dude, I thought about it. I was going to elbow drop. <laughs> little kids. I don't care. Um, it was fun, though. Yeah. Nice little party. It was a good time. April uh, had a good time. Aston had a good time. The boys stayed home, which I was for the best. grateful for. Yeah. <laughs> I got to actually chill and hang out a little bit. It was, so. Yeah, no, it was it was a lot of fun having you guys there, too. Yeah. Um, Maybe we'll talk about some of this off air. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's what I've anyway, had the last yeah. couple of days. Uh, well, I, I also I also brought um, the Willet Rye Saw that, yeah. to that party. I had I had some of that. That is such a subtle rye. Like it, it and even at you know what is it like a hundred and eight proof or something? Yeah, one one oh eight to one eleven is usually yeah. off the range. I mean, it it just doesn't drink like that at all um i think that that's probably one of the bigger highlights recently but i also did this live stream last week uh which if you've not watched yet (laughs) go and go and watch i tried to figure out what the best old-fashioned with a low proof bourbon was and i was really surprised by the results of it uh, it shocked the heck out of me, but if you've not watched that yet, go and check it out. Uh, hopefully the audio for it will be up in the podcast feed before too long as well. Uh, but that's going to be an ongoing series for a little while, trying to figure out kind of the best proof for a, for a bourbon in an old fashioned. And I'm sure eventually I'll have to get to a rye series as well. I'm curious to see if when you find the best one under like a hundred proof, if Compare it to OGD one fourteen. If you're gonna be like, oh no, nope, throw this out. Like it's almost like that Parks and Rec episode where they make the two burgers. You oh. carefully crafted <laughs> this wonderful thing, and then there's just Ron Swanson goes, "This is a burger." Twenty beef, yeah, on a bun. <laughs> this is a burger. I made it on the grill. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I'm just curious because I feel like for me, it would definitely be that way. That 114, 110 yeah. area. Oh, I love it. Love it. Are you going to do a hazmat one? <laughs> I don't have enough hazmat bourbon to... What if you made one out of this hazmat apple brandy? <laughs> oh, I would love to do that. We still haven't opened that, have we? No. <laughs> oh, so, man. I got to open it. This fucking wax job is just so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> So dumb. So stupid. 
I, I like apple brain, so I would gladly taste that and just see. Yeah, because I've had aged, enough of it. It's aged in tequila barrels. I haven't had that. It's wild. Just all over the place. Insane. 145.1 proof. Amazing. Amazing. Oh, yeah, we need to get into that. The thing is, like, I realized after that stream <laughs> that I need to do like small <laughs> smaller old fashions for the next stream. Cause I mean, I and, and the thing is I didn't finish all four of the ones that I, I made because by the time that I got through the stream. I was like, I can't, I just can't do another one it's of so these. It's so hard to make a small right old now. fashion, though. I mean, if, like, I just, if I just cut the ingredients in half, so it's know, two it instead like of it's four. Like nothing in there. You didn't put ice in it, did you? No, I did. Okay. I feel like the, uh, something so small with a little bit of ice with it would be so hard to. Yeah. I I kept it really, really simple. Uh, I, I did my, I, I preferred brown sugar. Instead of just the white sugar in uh, in old fashions, uh, two types of bitters and bourbon. Yeah, you could so, probably pre make them need. all up and just put them in the fridge, and then just have your ice ready to go right there and just pour well, it straight over. I mean, that's essentially what I did. Yeah. Like I pre I, I pre made all. Work. I didn't yeah. know. No, I pre made all four of them, Sorry. and I just brought them out, um, and added the ice afterwards. Otherwise, gotcha. it would have been just really, <laughs> really watery and disgusting. So, glad I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I probably would have, because I'm an idiot. So, five years. We're not going to do news this week. I, I feel like this is our chance to be a this little bit... This is the in, news. Tim Bip turns five years old. Yeah, our chance to be a little retrospective and introspective and everything, but... um. You guys came on like I like I was saying earlier. Came on at very different times in in the show, um, and from de- very different points of view as well. Like Eric, you were a listener before you were a co-host, and yes. Swan, you were like kind of a behind the scenes producer almost in in some ways. Because I mean, you were finding bottles for us to review you were finding you know kind of helping us shape some of the stuff that we were doing as well i would regularly go and ask you you know what do you think's working about the show right now what what do we need to improve on and you know it was it was always a very honest feedback that i was given at that point too but um i mean you guys have (laughs) you've, you've both left what i would just called uh lasting impressions on the the dna of the show at at this point but uh i'm i'm curious like you know what what are you guys eric i've asked you this question a thousand times so you you're okay to kind of we can we can copy and paste answers in here but um as far as like the fabric of the show over the past five years um what what have you noticed as being like the biggest change or you know what have been some of your all's favorite parts uh through throughout it all i think the biggest change that i've noticed has gone from not even first episode to where we are now but there was a midpoint between when the first couple of episodes where it felt like three guys hanging out having drinks so we got to the point where we're like, oh, brands are sending us stuff. It's like, we've got to we've got to really kind of get into the whiskey and know this and that. And then we had to learn how to kind of incorporate not only like a serious review with genuine facts and news and interesting things that were factual, but not lean into that so heavy and get back to being goofy. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, once, especially once Eric got on, it was just like, it was like, all right, cool. We've really found our groove as far as like, we can be factual. We can give tasting notes. We can really get into it, but we can be just as goofy and individual and ourselves as we were on episode one. You know, I mean, because if you go back and listen to it, it really does feel like you're like, all right, cool. You know, maybe I'm traveling. Maybe I'm in the car. Maybe I'm 
you know, just listening while I clean the house or fold some laundry or whatever. But I feel like if I were to pour myself a Glen right now and sit down, I'm hanging out with three of my friends. And it's gotten back to that, but now we know how to converse about we, it's yeah all there's the a, facts too. There's a yeah, there's a good balance. Yeah. Between it all and it, it I mean that that comes with the territory and I said on the the first episode that this was going to be our journey through learning bourbon. And I, I mean if if nothing else like I I I have a a a time capsule almost of my weekly journey through learning about bourbon over the past five years. Yeah. Like I, I've, I've given myself that opportunity to like go back and, 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 and the crazy thing too, and I'll tell on myself, I completely forgot that I ever said this, but episode one of the podcast, I said something to the effect of, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. Uh, I find the most well-balanced bourbon to be Woodford Reserve. A thing that I actually said on this podcast. And now, I don't even know if I really have that opinion. Like, that's not something that I have kind of in my my arsenal ready to to list out. But, you know, like at that point, it was, oh, because there are so many different flavors and people can find different things to latch on to and, you know, all that. But... It it just is. I, I I never would say that now. <laughs> that's yeah. that's so far out of my lexicon these days. What would you but say it is now? I don't. I honestly don't know if I have an answer for that. Okay. Jim Beam bonded. Maybe. Oh man, I haven't had Jim Beam bonded in so long. Oh. It's yeah. I mean, it, we we went through that period where that was like something that we were talking about a lot. Uh, especially with finding those older, <clears throat> older bottles. Um, I don't know, maybe Elijah Craig, maybe, but even still, I'm like, I'm super hesitant about putting that label on it. Right. But, I think that's a good marker for growth. Like it just shows, you know, how you've changed. In, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, to be, to be fair, it did not take long for me to latch on to, uh, Elijah Craig in the Heaven Hill profile, yeah. uh, and for that to kind of be what I uh, what I lean towards, I guess. I mean, I I think that not think I know that I love Elijah Craig Barrel Proof in the same way that Chad and Sarah love Booker's. Like my my Elijah Craig or my Booker's is Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Does that makes sense. Yeah. I think it does. I don't know what you're saying. Yeah. Or Knob Creek. Yeah, Knob Creek single barrels, man. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, I don't want to talk about that. Um <laughs> Yeah. That one I get real little. emotional right now. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. That's cuz I mean, but even still like Elijah or excuse me, Knob Creek was the very first barrel pick I ever did. Too. So, I mean, that that's I think somewhere kind of lodged away in the in my brain that you know that that association of like oh this is special to me like i have a sentimentality towards this this brand this product and so you know not somewhat intentionally but also maybe you know that's that's somewhere in the back of my brain poking around too but eric i know that you like you have said that like just the 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 kind of format of the show just being what it is now, <laughs> it kind of took the the windy road that it did over the past five years. But now, yeah, I mean, it's it's absolutely not just a straightforward like, oh, bourbon and only bourbon podcast at this yeah. point. Yeah, and like, uh, <clears throat> and as as I was listening to Swan, like, I think one of the things that um, that he mentioned that really hit for me was. Um, being able to like listen to this, like I would want to listen to you guys. Not uh, normally, I want to listen like when I'm at a, the gym or when I'm driving because it's I'm alone or whatever. 
but I would want to listen to you guys while I was able to drink. You know what I mean? Like, and he's, you know, yeah. Swan, Swan mentioned, you know, this is something you want to pour a drink up and like, it's like you're with your friends and like Swan, I mean, me and Swan, we kind of have the same answers in, in a roundabout way. It was like, you know, you went from, you know, just kind of talking, learning how to be a podcast to be, to becoming a actual bourbon podcast where you're doing reviews and you're getting a little bit more into it. And then you started, you know, you get a little bit more into tips and bits and all that. And that's where, like, it's just like this evolution to a podcast that anybody can enjoy almost. It's like you don't have to, even if you wanted to skip over the first half of the bourbon stuff, it's like, oh, they're going to review Thor or they're going to do this or whatever. Like, you get bourbon reviews, you get video game stuff. And, like, that's still, to this day my favorite part about it and that's why i love being a part of it it's because it's like that podcast for me because it's everything in it it's they're going to talk about a new show they're going to talk about a new bourbon they're going to goof off and have fun like it's it's just not like something you turn on you're like well they're going to give a review and then it's over and then we're going to wait till next week and that's that's just my thing. Like you could go back and listen to it. And like Swan said, you can see the evolution of how it kind of went from one to another back to that. And then you started figuring it all out. And now here we are to where you get everything. Yeah. You get everything. I mean, I, I, I think that now that's, that's so much more representative of what it actually is like to sit down with your friends and start drinking and the conversations that you have, because I mean, it, it is very at any bourbon tasting at any event where you're sitting down with people and and drinking the same stuff it is not uncommon for you to talk about bourbon at first get a little bit of alcohol in you and then you just kind of start talking about life yeah like that's that is not uncharacteristic of every bourbon event that i've been to yeah, I mean every I, tasting, every f- festival, every whatever. Right, like that's just how it goes. And I, 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 I like that. You know, Tim Bip shows that that side of things too. Right. I love bourbon, and I I love it so much. But I don't want to talk about it twenty four seven. You know yep. what I mean? Like I want to enjoy a pour with you guys, and then we talk about an album or we talk about a movie or something like, yeah, that's something that we, we know we all like, we know this and that, but like, that's like the thread that's kind of holding it together. But then we all like more stuff and we all have more things in common. And like, that's the thing about this is like, it doesn't have to be 24 seven whiskey. You know what I mean? It's like, let's talk about whiskey let's drink some whiskey then let's talk about what everybody else is doing what everybody else is watching what we're reading yeah. all that stuff and that's what i love about it like that's just you know that's yeah. life i mean that's what builds a community too because i mean if you were one of those you know podcasts that get in there review something in under 10 minutes realistically the best way that you use that podcast is listen to it understand it like the person's personality enough and then decide whether or not you're going to buy the bottle they have. That's yeah. cool, but it doesn't really incentivize a community. When you start getting weird and people buying into your personality and the things that you're talking about, and like, you know what? I will check out that TV show they mentioned at the end. This dude's into anime. I love that. He's doing what with snack cakes now? And then <laughs> that guy's name is Swan. He used to like fireball. I mean, like you can kind of yeah. get into like, yeah, Either I had that phase, or that's kind of funny, actually. I right. think I enjoy that. Like, you can you can buy into that, and then all of a sudden you're thinking, I do want to leave a five-star review. I do want to go hang out on their Facebook group. I do want to do this stuff. And then you start no. finding out that, like, that's kind of why the people that have stuck around so long stuck around. Like, even if they're not rushing to download that week's podcast, like, they're still there because the people are good. And they all buy into your personality, and they enjoy it. And uh, you just don't you just don't get that if you're strictly business. All the yeah, time. yeah, and and you know I think the the most <laughs> consistent criticism of the show has been these guys laugh too much. They're <laughs> too giggly, Jealous. and and you know I don't 
I just don't get that. Like, I don't understand that, that point of view, that, that mindset. And, 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 you know, I, the thing that I've been saying the most over the past couple of years is that when, when I come across somebody who I don't agree with, my reaction is just, ah, well, they're not wired the same way that I am. Like, it's just a, a matter of different perspectives and everything. But like, we laugh too much. We have too much fun hanging out with our good friends and drinking whiskey and, and having conversations and, and getting to just be together. You want a situation where you you don't want that joy, that excitement? Right. I don't get that, you know? And, and I mean, essentially that means that what we do is not for that person who feels that way. But at the same time, I'm just, like... We're we're still going strong after five years. What we're doing is working super well. And I mean I, I have to just kind of take it on the chin anymore and, and move on. Money and shot. just you know what I mean. Yeah. Um <laughs> sorry. Anyway. Um it, it the the point is just that I you know, I <laughs> if we lost Swan. Swan's broken. <laughs> <laughs> The point sunken, is, sunken if, you down can't, chair. if you can't listen to something and have fun with the people <laughs> listen to it, then fucking listen to something else, okay? Yeah. I mean, We're going to laugh. We're going to be goofy. Look, NPR's there for a reason, you know? <laughs> like, like, stuff like that. We got if extra you skin around here. Come on now. <laughs> God, just laugh. Is that where the phrase, we've got skin in the game, comes from? It is now. All right, fair enough. Um... So I wanted to I wanted to do something different Ooh. here. Okay. I I'm gonna play something for for you all, the listeners. I that I never I never put out. I came across it recently. Uh and it's an it's an episode of, of Tim Bip that didn't make it to air. Um but I, I think you guys are going to enjoy it. I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and let it play here. But uh, we're going to come back on the other side of this and uh, chat a little bit more and do a review and kind of wrap things up. So uh, I, I hope everybody enjoys this lost episode of This Is My Bourbon Podcast. Everybody, welcome back to This Is My Bourbon Podcast, the podcast where we talk about the spirit of Kentucky and all things that make it special. Uh, I'm your host, Perry, and with me back this week, it's the home base co hosts, uh, the baby bourbon boy himself, Tanner and Curtis. Hi, guys. Hi. Hey, what's up? Hey, it's good to, uh, to be with you definitely in the same room together, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Yes, it's just the great. It's the greatest. I love there's, hanging there, out. There's this nothing, room is huge, by the way. There's nothing like being really so close to each other that we could smell each other's breath, for sure. <laughs> to- totally. Concerning. That's the thing we don't have to worry about in 2017 slash 18 because we're there's never going to be anything that we would have to worry about. <laughs> Wait, are you okay? <laughs> Why are we? What, what yeah, are what's you wrong about? with you? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just feeling. I'm feeling a little existential this uh, this week of this episode. But uh, you know, I we we normally start uh, things out by by talking about you know like the what we've been drinking recently or you know stuff like that. And uh, I'm I'm sipping on some uh, some Heaven Hill bottled and bond, which will definitely not ever go away as a good budget pour in Kentucky for twelve to thirteen dollars. Um, but uh, have you guys been drinking anything special or different recently? Uh, I, I, I've been drinking, uh, 1792 cause that's never going to go up in price. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've been, uh, drinking a lot of Henry McKenna, uh, 10 year bottled and bond. So, uh, oh, you know, I'm, that's I'm some so, great I'm stuff. So- I'm so happy that that stuff is still easy to get and definitely $30 and oh, it's very hasn't, hasn't, you know, shot up in price or 
lacking in availability, but you know, well, that's like my go-to bourbon. I just go and pick it up off the shelf. So, you know, it, it, since we, we all three still live in Richmond, Kentucky. Um, I, you know, I was able to find it at the, the Kroger wine and spirits not too long ago. Shout out. Uh, it did. Yeah. Big shot, big shout out. Go, go, uh, see our buddy Dakota who, who works over there still definitely that, uh, anyway, um, <laughs> I've, I've been drinking on, this is something that I haven't, uh, haven't really had too much of recently, but I'm starting to get into more, uh, Maker's Mark cast strength, mm. but I can't, okay. I, I can't have a whole lot of it cause it's, it's way too high proof for me. And it, I Super it just, hot. Yeah. it's just a lot of alcohol burn and I, I don't, I like the smooth bourbon. You know, mm-hmm. like we all agree, like we did in uh, episode early episodes of this podcast, right? I mean, we're still in the early episodes, I guess, but uh, I, you know, it, it's just we can't do we can't do anything too. High. It's got to be smooth, right? Because I definitely said in episode one of this podcast that Woodford Reserve is the best, most well-rounded bourbon uh, that you could you could find, but oh, yeah. you know, whatever. Well, Great this take. Is well rounded. <laughs> mm. Okay. Well, uh, we uh, we we don't want to get too far into this podcast without just kind of jumping right into it. So I figured it's it's time for us to to sip on our bourbon of choice for this week's episode, uh, which I have not really had much of before. But I, I'm I'm curious about what what this is going to be like. But uh, Wild Turkey 101. Have you guys even really heard much of this one before? No. Now, wh- what do the numbers mean, Perry? <laughs> Does this mean there are 101 bottles and we got three of them? Well, I'm glad that you asked. What do you mean I three? Mean, we're we're just cool. drinking from the same bourbon <laughs> we just, bottle. Tannic. We showed three bottles. <laughs> How far does this performance art go, Perry? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Tanner, whoever the heck you are. <laughs> Oh no, he's lost it. He's oh, he's no, too I'm far. Losing, he's too far I'm into losing, the cast strength already. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, no, but uh, baby bourbon boy, this. <laughs> I love it. I love it when you call me that. <laughs> it was a real name we gave you. For this no, I know. Podcast, I know. I, remember? I, 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 remember yeah, back I'm, in the day? <laughs> I'm playing into the bit. I understand. I get it. Um, no this it's 101 proof um and right right now it's like uh it's like a seven to nine year old maybe a little bit of 12 year old bourbon in there uh because that's that's what wild turkey's got but i don't i don't know a whole lot about wild turkey though i haven't really spent time like getting into their their profile and and their products but i hear good i hear good things about them i've been meaning to get up to their uh their distillery and check out the the gift shop and and whatnot but have you guys checked out any any distilleries recently uh i've been to maker's mark um oh i love maker's so, mark yeah so maker's pretty cool you know you get to dip the bottle and so that's pretty awesome and you know the bourbon's pretty good so Tanner. <laughs> well, I was just gonna say uh, I, I've I, I've I've been to one. I've been to Jim Beam, and uh, they had great tacos. Uh, but I was uh, Matthew McConaughey. He just he just became Wild Turkey's creative director, right? That's oh, did exciting. That, did that happen this year? <laughs> Twenty sixteen. Yeah. <laughs> I just googled this. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Last year. That's right. The, you know, you know how time works. It's very definitive in 2017. It seems like there are things that happen, and we go, oh, that was last year or this year, and we just kind of move on from it. There's no big glob of like time that, yeah. that we we have to deal with uh, all together. But that's why we're all still in in the same room. At the same time, and he's like super involved with it, isn't he? He's super involved. We we haven't yeah, he's even on like campus all the time. Because I hear yeah, I hear he's I got a new he's got a new uh, product coming out or a new product that has already come out. I can't remember for sure. Um, let's let's just uh, give it a little 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 look see just to make sure because I don't want to be I don't want to be wrong. This is a very uh, oh God, there's no easy way for me to tell him on google right now um well it's it's 
either out or will be out soon, uh, Wild Turkey Long Branch. Anyway, so <laughs> that's another Wild Turkey product, speaking of uh, Wild Turkey 101. Um, do you guys want to take a sip of this and, and figure out what we think about it? Because I don't know, I don't know yeah. anything about this bourbon. Uh, Tanner's looking a little bit nervous, too, because it's 101 proof. Yeah, this sounds strong, Barry. I don't know what I'm, in, I'm getting in for. Getting in Consi- for getting can- into I don't know what you're in for either, man. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right, there it is. You poured so fast, the both of you. I did. Well, it's almost like we had it I ready to go. The, I just Here, I'll my pour. I'll, I'll pour. I was a little gonna bit do a live some... pour, like a. Eh, I just opened up the bottle. <laughs> I. We all just opened up the bottle together. All right, fine. Right? Except I'm not really joking. <laughs> I really just opened the bottle. <laughs> Okay. Mine, Except mine this isn't part of the bit. <laughs> and just just so we we let everybody know, we are drinking out of the same style of glasses because uh, we're not fancy enough to have anything better than rocks glasses right now. Shout out! Shout out! Mm-hmm. Big shout out! I said it twice. I think I said it a lot back then. No, you definitely should did. We add, <laughs> should we add uh, some ice cubes? No, Dude. I think I think we need to stick with the way that we've been reviewing it over the past however many episodes, mm, of uh, and just, oh. just drink it, drink it neat. Because um, you remember the very first episode we did a blind flight uh, of bottle and, cheap bottled and bond bourbons together, uh, and mm-hmm. we all wound up with very different, uh, very different orders and things that we liked. Okay. You remember? Yeah. It was just like a few weeks ago, right? Yeah, yeah, that wasn't that long ago. Yeah, no, that was really cool. There definitely hasn't been a thing that's kept us uh, in. Never mind. Anyway. So should we have the uh, first sip? What's it smell? I think it smells kind of kind of spicy right off the bat. Baby bourbon boy, what do you think? <laughs> you make me sound more and more like a superhero every time I say it. Chocolate from every orifice, man. What are what's, what are you gonna do to fix it? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> my favorite bits uh he's yeah drowning. it smells he's drowning because <laughs> chocolate's coming from every uh <laughs> answer my eyes johnson no i get a little <laughs> i get a little uh a little cinnamon a little clove yeah i'm getting i'm getting uh some caramel you know mm. i get some caramel notes. yeah i mean that's what i kind of tend to look for with with bourbon is you know those classic notes and then if it's it, i can't do anything more specific than that Clove is really good, though, dude. Hey, thanks, man. I like cooking. I, that was actually really nice. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, I, what I don't know in bourbon, I know in cooking, so it's fine. I, I, I got smells down. <laughs> Fantastic. That's good That's good stuff. All right. Well, because we're all together in the same room, and uh, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun recently, because we're definitely about, I don't know how many weeks, 10 weeks into this. Cheers. I'm getting some spice notes. For sure. You know, it's not as spicy as I thought it might have been at 100. I thought proof. the same thing. No, yeah, yeah, it's not as hard as I expected. It's uh, using a word that I definitely have been using a lot around this time. Smooth. I don't know if I'd go that far. <laughs> it's a little it's a little warm. It's, smooth, it's smoother than the maker's cast strength that I've been drinking yeah. recently. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. I guess mm-hmm. if you're eating lava, then hot pockets don't taste too bad. <laughs> And you know, there's that that Kentucky hug, as you. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, no, it is oh, definitely hitting me. Go. It's definitely hitting me right in the middle of the chest in the way that uh, yeah. semi higher proof bourbons do. Uh, but you know, that's the kind of thing that you need to get get into with, um, maybe to help you feel a little better now that the <laughs> Me Too movement has spread globally. Jesus. What. <laughs> hey, can you can you believe that um uh they had those hearings for Brett Kavanaugh? <laughs> Boy, can I believe it. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, we're only talking about me too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, I'm going to backtrack some of that, I think, and just move on. <laughs> hey everybody, There's it's our new best Matthew. friend. Matthew there Matthew is. McConaughey's actually just walked in. This is this is 
a big revelation for the podcast. It's our first guest, our first celebrity guest. Matthew wow, Kai hi, is Matthew. Here. Thanks for stopping by. Hey, man. All hey. right, all right, all right. Texas. I love, I love me, I love going back and watching um, that movie. Interstellar. Interstellar. <laughs> <laughs> Had Interstellar come out yet? Is, I don't even know if it's if it's Texas. in theaters right now, but uh, I'm a big I'm a big fan I'm a big fan big fan big fan of Wild Turkey. And also the University <laughs> it's of actually, Texas and Link and Lincoln. It's actually going to be in my autobiography that is coming out, especially right now. Mr. McConaughey, your Green voice Lights. your voice seems to change very abruptly. <laughs> <laughs> Almost like it's three different guys <laughs> trying to do when, this point. You remember when I was in Wolf of Wall Street? Has that movie come out yet? That was 2014. I think it had come out. 2014. Day. Yeah, it was. 2013. What? Oh, wow. Same day as Anchorman 2. I saw him in a double feature. That's real. Did you? <laughs> yeah. At a drive in? Oh, no, Matthew's gone. <laughs> Oh, bye, Matthew. Uh, Sorry. No, on, on on Christmas Day, uh, we Curtis. snuck into the second showing. Curtis of... is doing the 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 chest thumping thing. Oh! He, <laughs> he, he does that in that scene. I yeah. uh, so do you do you like this? Do you guys like this bourbon or? I I would definitely pick it up again. It's not as uh, hot as I was expecting, so. Uh, you know, I'm trying to get more into a higher proof bourbon, so I think that's Me definitely too. something that I'm going to try to do. Me too, Tanner. You're you're a baby. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know anything. Uh, yeah, it's 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 that all right. That was so much more of an insult than I meant for it. <laughs> no, to I don't. Be. Care. I don't care. Do it. I don't care. Uh, yeah, no, it's it's good. It's uh, I don't know, a little warm for my liking. I might like it in like a hot toddy apple cider situation, maybe a little yeah. bit more. Yeah. What What would you you think you would rather have? Ah, bullet. <laughs> okay. Just Just regular bullet. Yeah, that's that's, a, all, that's, that's another. Drink. Yeah. That's another brand that definitely wouldn't go through any kind of controversy coming up <laughs> soon. Um. Yeah. Bullet's real good. I I like. I think I would have to put this up against the that Heaven Hill bottle and bond. That I was talking about earlier, the mm. the twelfth, because I mean, this was like, you know, twenty five dollars, and I just don't know if I want to splurge that much. But you know, if it if it's around and I can't get the thing that I I like the most, which is my house bourbon of Heaven Hill Bottled and Bond, uh, I mean, I could maybe see myself eventually swaying over to the side of this the this particular bourbon, but. Uh, we we do have a, a review system too of uh, nose palette finish and price. We do uh, what each category is out of five, I think, and uh, big score out of out of twenty. You can multiply it by five to get the score out of a hundred if you want. But you know, you said twenty five numbers sufficient. I'm lost. <laughs> I, well, you said before Tanner that it was a forty point scale, which I realized didn't make sense because you could just multiply by five. But you know. Wait, what? <laughs> Nothing is fine. We'll talk about it later. Anyway, so <laughs> what do you guys think about the way this one smells? This is very much in line with the amount of editing that I've had to do recently on this podcast during this era. <laughs> <laughs> what are, you asked us to smell something? How are we gonna talk and smell, Barry? You're the host. <laughs> yeah, but you're you guys are the you home. Asked. You guys are the home base co-hosts. Remember? Yeah, but you're the showrunner. Remember, remember how during the second episode, my dog tried to hump uh, Curtis a lot. <laughs> oh yeah, I yeah, that, that happened a lot. That was happen It happens all the time. She loves you yeah. for some reason. Actually, That'll probably happen in future episodes. And we're going to have to relocate to the office upstairs mm. here in Richmond, Kentucky. Uh, I, I, would, I would give the smell, trying to get the show back on the rails, uh, as the, the co-host that I am. Uh, all right, the nose. I w- <laughs> I no, would no, give, it's fine. That's just one of the categories. I would give the, uh, the, 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 the Toucan Sam the nose that knows. I would give it, uh, <laughs> I, I'd say like a, Two out of five, not my favorite. There's not a lot there for me. 
It's 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 very spicy without any sweet, in my opinion. I, I yeah, would, I was kind of thinking the same thing. I'm I, I was gonna go with like a two point seven five. Whoa! Oh. Yeah. You know, I still keep uh, up with that spreadsheet that I started around the time of this <laughs> podcast, and definitely is oh, still yeah. up to date until now that nobody else has seen <laughs> but me. Uh, yeah, but two seven five is gonna be a whole lot of. Okay, that's got, that's a lot of math there for me, man. Yeah, I know. I should probably just switch to you know whole numbers, but <laughs> we'll just roll with two seven five. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, I love the nose on this one. Mm. I I actually get a, a really good balance between baked goods and and spiciness, and I think that that's actually a big change for me with the things that I've been normally saying about the bourbon. That mm-hmm. we've been drinking recently, but I'm I'm gonna give it a three point five on wow. the on the nose. Okay, yeah, yeah. that's pretty uh, that's pretty high there. Taste though, as far as palate goes. Mm-hmm, mm. Sorry, yeah, palate. Yeah, palate. Um, so for palate, I actually really enjoy this one. I, I think that I'm gonna give it a uh, a four. Um, you know, it wasn't it doesn't hit as much as the nose. Uh, hits and I'm really getting some of those sweet caramel notes. Um, some of that clove that, uh, Tanner was talking about. And I I really enjoy the palate. I actually do get a lot of clove on this. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Tanner, what about you on the palate? Uh, yeah, I, I think palate is the, the, the best attribute of this bourbon for me. Um, I, I would give it, I'm going to go three and a half. I'm not gonna get full, uh, full three quarters there like Curtis did, but I will. Uh, I'll, I'll give it three and a half, almost a four. But I'm still... actually giving it a three point five as well. Mm. I, it, it's just a very solid middle of the road. I I think that I could wind up getting to a point in my life where if you know I I needed to make any kind of change uh, to what my daily drinker is, this could definitely fill that that void. Uh, after and certain it, things might get canceled or not canceled, discontinued. Canceled is a term we don't really use much in 2017-18. What? <laughs> what Me does that too mean? was a thing in 2017. It's being used yeah, all the time. Did. But were, you, used, but were you actually using canceled at that I point, think, though? I think so. I can't I think remember. We were. Harry can't Weinstein remember. got canceled, right? That was a thing? Yeah. Oh, I thought no, I think it started got in 2017 and everybody has got canceled. <laughs> Yeah, especially now the, in uh, seventeen eighteen. I think the the window for cancellation has just sh- like or has expanded. Like you can be canceled for more now than ever. But I think back then you could <laughs> you could still be canceled. It was just a smaller group of. I mean, I, I I I dream yeah. of a day when we can retroactively cancel people too. Mm. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> receipts they might call them. <laughs> Dig up past and call them receipts. Now, are, are you guys getting uh, like a pepper note? I'm getting some peppery notes. I get a, I get a little bit, but I also kind of get this thing of like, um, like, like a honey, too, mm. on the palate. See, I, I'm definitely more on the savory side here. I don't get a lot of sweet personally. No, I, I think that yeah, this, this actually does fall in the more savory side mm. of things. But yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. Here, here's here's where I start to kind of fall on on the rating scale. Um, I think the finish goes a little bland mm. on the back end. It it's almost like, um, <clears throat> and not that it's a bad thing, but uh, it, it, like freshly baked bread. But then it just kind of stops, almost like mm. a like a fresh rye bread. I can get that, and I definitely agree. These that are some very advanced it notes stops. for somebody who just started a podcast in the past few months. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking hot. It's just warm, <laughs> just super hot, <laughs> just real hot. <laughs> Sorry, Tanner, uh, Curtis, I interrupted you. Can can a uh, finish be short? Can it, you know, just stop like abruptly? Of course it like, can. Yeah. Uh, okay. I just wasn't sure. That's kind of what I'm feeling with this. Is it just stops abruptly? Sorry, the the um, the things I'm supposed to take care of, which are definitely not a child, and for sure my dogs are uh, crying in the background. So I had to make sure everything was okay. Anyway, yeah, no, 
I, I, I do think it's a little bit of a short finish, but I don't think it takes away from how good this this bourbon is overall. I think if I had to like classify it as something that people could maybe relate a little bit more towards, I I I do kind of lean towards that like rye bread, like fresh kind of rye bread character, but there there are savory notes that go into it as well that make me think more of like a Reuben or because <laughs> because I mean but there is even like a bitterness that you kind of as, uh, associate with with vinegar in there too. Yeah, the, the, there's like a now that you've said it, there is some sort of in the same way that like a distillery almost smells like a bakery can smell sometimes like with the no, yeah, aspect of it, it's that right? It's yeah, that like. Because sometimes you you walk onto the the grounds of the distillery, or if you you work at a building in Frankfurt for the state, and you get there really early in the morning, and you smell just like the the mash in the air, uh, mm-hmm. and it's like you know yeah yeah you're kind of like in a in a bakery and, and everything yeah. yeah no that's that's definitely something that people would be accustomed or when you to like at this of, point. Uh, walk into a Rick House, you kind of have some of that. Oh, there's a uh, lot of residual oak. On this yeah. mm-hmm. as well, mm. but I, I I I really enjoy this one. This is just diff, it hits it hits different, which is something we may be saying right now. Yeah, it's pretty fire. So oh, it's lit, dude. It's so lit. Have you guys have you guys thought about getting tickets to Fire Festival yet? Not even on my radar. Very what, specific. What, very really? specific. But that's happening ro- around this time. But did we know about Firefest to the scale we know of it now before I don't it was know. a disaster? I don't know. Definitely not. I only know of it as a disaster. I don't know. I, I, I saw it, I saw it, it on Ticketmaster. <laughs> did you really? <laughs> you were going to wow. say TikTok, and I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> no, I, I saw, saw it on I Vine, saw bro. On, mu- on Musical.ly. <laughs> yeah. I saw or, it on Yik Yak. Or, have you guys have you guys seen that uh, Yik Yak? <laughs> <laughs> that popped me. I haven't thought about Yik Yak in forever, dude. That's so funny. Yik Yak. <laughs> no. Did you know I got banned from Yik Yak once? <laughs> Why? <laughs> because I was trying to ask people if they'd heard the new Gary Clark Jr. album. Of course. <laughs> That's the most they used story of spam. all time. They thought it was spam. <laughs> <laughs> The only Yik Yak story I remember is when I was on UK's campus and because you had to be like on the campus to access it. Right. That was was Uh the thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so I was on UK's campus looking through it and Alabama was playing in basketball that week. And so there was like this weird UK Alabama alliance that was like Alabama was like, we can root for you guys in basketball and you can root for us in football. And everybody was like, "Okay, cool. That's fine. Naturally. Naturally. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was all we're, we're trying to recruit people into a weird... You're welcome anyway. for the Yik Yak reference. <laughs> yeah, that was great. That, that popped me for sure. That's the best 2017 reference we've had, I think. Yik Yak. Oh, man. I it was probably dead Yik. by then, wasn't it? It was, it was. not, oh, it it was not around been. long. It had to Yeah, have been. it was there for like a year, I think. Yeah. Vine was probably dead too, but... No, Vine Vine didn't... Vine won't die <laughs> for, for another couple of years. Because Drew Gooden definitely has his uh, Road Work Ahead video. No, that was like 2014, bro. No, it wasn't. Yeah. No, Hold it on. wasn't. That was I'm recent. I'm pretty sure Vine was over by 2017. There's no way. Yik Yak was like 2013 to 2014 or something. Vine was officially stopped January 17th, 2017. Really? Yeah. Its heyday was like 13 to 16, I think. Because I remember being a fre- it was really big when we were freshmen. That's the only thing I remember. When you all were freshmen, yeah. So twenty fourteen, and I w- and I was at a different college than we are right now. Yeah, well, I'm true. still at the same college, and you guys have graduated and yeah, gone on to work at different places. I'm anyway. working at an agency that definitely won't close. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely just didn't get really sad thinking about that. <laughs> That's fine. It was. It's fine. It deserved yeah, that. Yeah, no, it's I know, good. but still. And I think I'm going to work at this. <laughs> I think I'm going to work at Keeneland for at least five to seven years. <laughs> you know what? Hey, You're consistent. I, I admire dream, it. Dreams are as big as you can make them. 
but I I think I'm gonna um, I don't know I'm just I'm just gonna see how things flow in the breeze. I gotta get over having this new graphic design professor right now. Uh, <laughs> at... <laughs> oh no, she turned out okay. Did she though? I mean, people like her now in the industry. I think. Yeah. Well, but... she sucked when we first had her. I, I'm, I'm sure. We have I'm always sure said that she's. She's good at uh, connecting people with connecting students with industry people. Yeah, she was good at that. That is what I will say. I never, I never felt that way. But I think it was because um, we currently do not and did not like each other. Interesting. She didn't like me. She didn't like me either. But like, she didn't like us. Yeah, you called her a carpetbagger. (laughs) Did I say that? Yes, you did. That's awesome. (laughs) I don't remember that. Do you not that's remember really that? yeah, that's really she, funny. She said something like in the middle of class, and you just were like carpetbagger, and she called you a. Oh, I can't even remember what she called you. I don't remember this at but all. But she re- she retorted no. to you in oh, class. Fair enough. Yeah, was, it's not was, been that long ago. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it was at least six years ago, right? Five yeah. six years ago. Well, we wouldn't. We didn't have her as a senior. So what do you mean six years ago? This is 2017. 18. I'm sorry, I've, I've lost sight of the bit. I don't know what's real anymore. Uh, <laughs> anyway, shout out to Ellen. Remember that? Remember her? Oh, I, miss, I, I do. I do miss second. Ellen. I don't miss Ellen. Shannon was better than mm-hmm. Ellen. Oof. Okay. Well, anyway, Both now that we're now great. that we're naming names, um, what would you guys? You give said them? Richmond, Kentucky, five times on this. Yeah, podcast. You're, right. You're, you're right. You make you make a very good point. I. Uh, <laughs> Do you guys have anything uh, like proof? Uh, sorry, no price. Do you guys want to rate this on the price? And what was the price again? Like twenty three ninety nine, twenty five, something like that. Okay. Uh, I'll I'll quickly rate finish because I didn't. Uh, mm. And uh, we'll, we'll we'll save that. Uh, I, I'm not I'm not a fan of the the finish. Really, it's kind of lackluster in all regards to me. Uh, I'll give it a two. Kurt. Yeah, I think I'm gonna give it. Probably a two as well. It's just too short. Um, it doesn't go, you know, it doesn't like warm all the way down. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to give it a two. I'm actually going to give it a 2.5. I think it's kind of mm. middle of the road for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I still get a little bit that I was picking up on with the palette, but it, it's it's less of like a consistent warmth through the through the chest and just kind of like, a nice little like comforting hug, I guess, that I'm getting with it. But I, uh, yeah. So I, I guess I really didn't give the the finish a score either earlier. But yeah, price price around twenty five dollars. I think this is kind of a steal uh, that people should either check out if they haven't already or consider looking at you know over the next couple of years because you know. Things aren't going to change too much for this brand, I'm sure, because uh, Matthew's Matthew's around now. A stalwart uh, yeah. of consistency, Matthew McConaughey isn't going to Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'd, I, I'm going to give the price a 3.5. I, I'm with you here. I think, uh, especially for the proof, it's not that, like, it's around the ballpark of other bourbons of much lower proof. So if that's what you're in the ballpark for, I think it's... Uh, or in the market for, I think that's a, a really good price for it. I'm actually going to give it a four. Um, oh, that's that's a that's a pretty great price for. Actually, you know, you you bring up a good point because there there's a little bit of uh, chitter chatter right now about you know people charging one dollar no sorry ten dollars per year uh, mm. that a bourbon has been around. So I mean, like if we apply that to this and the minimum age of anything that goes into this is six years. I mean that's sixty dollars a bottle, but you know they they mass produce this essentially. So sure. at twenty five dollars for at minimum a six year old bourbon, uh, that's that's actually not a a bad deal right yeah, now. It's a totally so, fair price. Yeah, no, actually I'm going to bump it up to a four. Yeah. I don't I don't mind that at all. Now that I think about it. Yeah, I mean I feel like I'm gonna have to you know piggyback off of you guys and say a four as well it's a good bourbon at the price at the proof point um because we know what proof points are now <laughs> um, it's not so 101 years and, old and and mash bills do you do we remember yes, and mash bills <laughs> T- tanner you remember mash bills from the first episode right 
Yeah, it's what happens when you compress a bunch of money. No, uh, it's your. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's what goes in. It's the ingredients list. Cooking. <laughs> I that was really good improv right there. Thinking Thanks. on your feet. Yeah, that was that was good stuff. <laughs> yeah. No. I yeah. Everything about this does kind of lean to lean itself towards being a, a really good value pour. Um, so my final score uh, was a 13.5 out of 20. But did you not see the the numbers from that uh, you know that that gif of that lady? <laughs> yeah, uh, Zach with all the numbers one? going to th- yeah, yeah exactly. Or Zach Galifianakis too. Yeah, that's right. Because um, that's within this time period. <laughs> I gotta I gotta think back of what I said. You said two for the nose. You said three point five for the palate, two for the finish. Right, and four. So that'd be what uh, eleven and a half. Yeah. All right. Kurt, I don't remember yours. <laughs> I had a four. I had a... I want to say I had a four. You've had two fours, maybe? You had a 3.75, because I, I made fun of you for it. Yeah, 3.75 <laughs> on the nose. I had a four for... Price. Price. And palette? F- four for palette, and a oh. two... So 13.75. Wow, for you that's actually yeah that's not bad. Hey, if you're if you're following along with our our new review model with the podcast, I mean that means you should probably go check it out and pick up a bottle and uh, it's a recommend from us all around. Yeah. So not a not a not a bad bottle of bourbon to <laughs> consider picking up if you're looking for a new budget bottle or whatever. I don't know. A, lot, a lot of bees. Uh, so I I normally. We normally rather end out episodes with a segment where we recommend things called tips and bits, but I want to uh, shift shift things a little bit because you know I think it's important for us to be introspective uh, or in some ways reflective and ask you guys something very different from what we normally talk about, and I, I want to I want to see if you guys can pinpoint almost exactly the things that you're going to do over the next five years if you're <laughs> you know or how how you think things are going to go or where five do you year, see a yourself five year plan five, of sorts five five year year, plan, yeah. Yeah. What's, your, what's your this is your five year plan podcast I mean that's so difficult to do though like I to know, see right? into the future like that I know I mean, it, yeah, it, how do you things, start things change so rapidly but you know I think you can I think you guys are are capable enough of doing that Am I am I starting? Is, well, you I normally gonna, did start even though I, bat? you you All normally right. did start even though I would say Curtis and Tanner, and your response was, "Well, I got named second, so I would go first. <laughs> this sounds like a different person. Uh, go, I'm gonna go back to episode one, and that's a real thing. No, no, no that I we... believe you, I believe you. I'm just like that. Just feels like a lifetime ago. Um, I mean, a, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'll probably uh, work at the agency I'm at until uh, the uh, the main retainer client uh, pulls out, and then they close up shop. Uh, and then I'll probably go freelance for a while, work for some other agencies in town, and then uh, there might be some massive world event that uh, makes freelance sort of the norm for a lot of people. Uh, and I'll probably do that until there's an agency that... Uh, needs more help more consistently and they call me and I work for them for maybe a year and then who knows what'll happen next uh and uh yeah life maybe I'll date yeah. someone and, and break up with them and love <laughs> the, the 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 splendors of life may come my way I didn't e- I didn't even know that that was the thing that you anticipated hey man happening you never know life. you never you know ne- what's gonna things happen things happen yeah yeah, I'm gonna so have to. Me, I'm gonna have to ask to ask you about the the details of those, the specifics of my the, prediction. <laughs> your, your prediction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah After yeah, we fun. get done recording tonight yeah, yeah. in my living room in Richmond, Kentucky, Curtis, what about what about you? Because you're definitely gonna be nearby for a while, right? I mean, you you haven't even. Uh, I mean, I I assume that you know proposing to Allie's within the you know next yeah. couple of years. Oh sure, yeah, right. Yeah, so I think uh, what I'm gonna do is. You know, I'm going to still keep working for the company that I'm at, Keeneland, and uh, then I'm going to get engaged um, and work in, you know, Lexington. Then 
I'm going to get married and move to Cincinnati and then be there for maybe a year still working at the same place because working remote uh, is, you know, I think it'll be normal by the time that happens. Wow, really? Um, you think that we're not yeah, going to have to go into an bold. office regularly? Yeah, no, I really think that uh, remote's going to kind of become a little wow. bit of the norm for wow. a lot of people. Do you think Trump's um, going to get a second term? <laughs> you know, I'm, I don't think so. I'm really going to hope not. Who's gonna? Uh, who's but gonna, I don't think so. Who's gonna beat him? It's got to be Michelle, right? That's the rumor. You think Michelle's gonna run? <laughs> that so that's what we've been told. Yeah, that was the but, that was the rumor. Wow. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go opposite and say maybe Biden. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Can you be Bernie? Vice president? I'm still pulling for Bernie. Uh, I think I'm a big Bernie Bernie's, guy. Bernie's yeah. Bernie's just so he's so with it, and you know that that bird landed on his podium at that one campaign rally, and um, every it was in Portland, right? And everybody said, "Oh, put a bird on it, like Portlandia, right?" Remember that? That definitely happened. Yeah, I yeah. No one, no one from that show is going to get canceled. No. <laughs> um. I, I yeah, and then after that, I think, I I think we'll be something. in Cincinnati f- for like a year, and then Crap. I'm gonna move to South Carolina. Wow. Whoa! Why South yeah. Carolina? That's a heck of a change. Just love the beach, man. Oh, <laughs> nice. You can so, shout gonna, out to Myrtle. Gonna be, you can be a surfer, bro. <laughs> no, not to Myrtle. To Charleston. <laughs> ah, of course. Sorry. Are you Are you gonna survive? Okay, during the uh, hurricane season of 2022. There's going to be hurricanes. Oh, sorry. You're right. We fixed that. Yeah, that's what I thought. We don't you know. know. Yeah, really you're right. That. We we really we really <laughs> pulled we really pulled together, and now hurricanes the aren't climate, a thing. In, yeah, we, in we pulled together climate change quite a bit, didn't we? Yeah, thing things are looking so great for the future. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. So, um, oh, got me. No, I'm just joking. There, there will definitely be a hurricane. I think its name will be Ian or something in 2022. So. I, I thought it was going to be pronounced Ian. Oh, like Ian Eagle, the sports broadcaster. Shout out. Sure. Yeah. Well, I was thinking, never mind. Anyway, this is a dumb bit that we're doing now. Uh, <laughs> well, I I, I want to say this um, because you guys are now, and I think you f- forever will be, I very important parts of this podcast that help define the tone and the energy and the the context for why we do this is my bourbon podcast uh and i'm sure in 2022 after five years uh through a lot of hardship and change and everything uh it's still going to be going strong and there are those of us who look back on it in 2017 and think very very fondly uh of of those times because they were much simpler and i uh, we didn't know how things were gonna change and evolve but you know i i'm sure at some point things might change a little bit but i know that i uh, it's gonna be very important to this particular host that uh, y'all, y'all were part of something that is as special and and means as much uh, to him as it does, uh, because it's it's been a very long five years. It's been a very eventful five years, but uh, I I love the both of y'all, and I'm I'm very thankful for uh, the contributions that you not only have given to Timbip, but or sorry, we haven't even started calling it that yet. Uh, this is my urban podcast. That sounds but, nice. You know, you you yeah, might. It seems like a good name. Yeah, it's a it's a good little abbreviation, but um, it th- things are definitely gonna be exactly the same in five years, and and none of us will ever leave. And we're all gonna <laughs> no. be in Richmond, Kentucky, forever. And I uh, that's it. I I won't have a I won't even have a child by then. You said that so defiantly. I won't even have a child. <laughs> well, I mean, she's probably, I mean, they are probably uh, an accident that <laughs> fit along the way. Uh, anyway, I think that does it for this week's Tim Bip. 
or yeah, I guess that's what we're calling it now. Uh, it, I was so excited. I was so excited to recommend Cuphead. I came up with a 2017 specific game oh. and everything. Oh, nice. it's, it's fine. I it's can't fine. wait. I can't wait to play Cuphead when I get a Switch in a year or so. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. But yeah, we might have to talk about that after we're done. Anyway. <laughs> Where where could people find you all on social media? Uh, I'm gonna break the veil because it's changed. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's probably for the best. I'm uh, uh, Tanner likes stuff everywhere. Sometimes there's one F because character limits, like Twitter, but most of the times there's two, like Instagram and TikTok, and that's a platform, right? Uh, yeah, you can find me there doing stupid stuff. Yeah, you can find me at on Twitter at KurtCon. Kurt underscore con 15 and on Instagram at Kurt con. And I am probably going to change my handle, uh, in the somewhat near future from P Ritter 1492 to P Ritter 1792. Oh, shut up. Um, well, it's, it, you know, it's, uh, more in line with Kentucky, which I'm much more proud of than, you know, uh, a man who sailed over. Fair to enough. this this land, and, I never even connected. Know. That's what it was. No, I no yeah, no. I, I I realized that within the past year, or I, I'm going to realize that within you know 21, 20, whatever. Um, <laughs> you know, you can follow me there, and you can also follow the show at uh, My Bourbon Pod. I think we're there now. I don't know if we've changed it yet, but whatever. Um, go f- go follow these guys. I love them so much, and I'm I. We're going to do more fun bourbon podcasting in the future. Uh, Until next time, I'm Perry. I'm Tanner. It was always me second. Oh, was it? Oh, God, I don't remember. Yeah, it was. was. It's okay. But just let's just go again. I'm Perry. Let's do it again. Do it again. Okay. Well, we'll see you. (laughs) This is great. We'll see you next week. But until then, I'm Perry. I'm Curtis. And I'm the baby bourbon boy, Tanner. (laughs) And this is my bourbon podcast. Well, I I hope you guys enjoyed that. Obviously, definitely an episode that we recorded back in 2017 and or 18 uh, that you've never heard before. Yeah, I didn't even know about that episode. Yeah, most people didn't. Y'all, uh, me. y'all have aged a bit. Oh, we look we look great. Yeah, we look just like we did then and now. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, we figured that it wouldn't be an episode of Ten Bip without a review, so we're gonna actually review the Kentucky Al Takumi edition. Oh, uh, boy. and this was sent to us. By the uh, the by Kentucky Owl, and, full bottle, right? Uh, yeah, full yeah. seven fifty. This is and this is a hundred and fifty dollar bottle, Damn. too. So what's the deets on this? Well, this is a collaboration uh, between John Rea, who is the master blender at Kentucky Owl, and Yahisa Yusuke, who is a Japanese whiskey blender. Uh, and stop me if you've heard that before. But <laughs> 100 proof, this is a blend of four, five, six, and I believe 13-year-old barrels. It's 11 or 13. I can't remember for sure. Uh, I don't have the paper around. Uh, but it's anywhere between, um, well, not anywhere between. Horrible way of phrasing that. I've been doing this for five years. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. I got it. Uh, <laughs> there's some there's some weeded bourbon in here. There's some uh, rye bourbon as well. Uh, but this is all stuff that was either allocated for them or that they might have actually distilled pre um, well pre change. We'll say pre change. But look at this bottle though. It's a it's a really pretty freaking bottle. It really is, yeah. I do enjoy the red, and I like the uh, the the bottom white label with the yeah uh, all the writing. It's the it's the Japanese flag. It's the the white on top and bottom, and then the red in the oh, middle. Oh, I see it now. I, I hadn't even now. thought of it, guys. Friggin' great design choice there. Way to go, Kentucky Owl Design Team. 
That's um, incredible. That, that is awesome. <clears throat> I wish they would have put an anime character on it, though. Made the owl look like an Made anime character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make that him look like... Um, badass. Make him look like Kepora Gebora from uh, Legend of Zelda. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yes. Put a little Naruto headband on him. Yeah, exactly. I love that. Uh, but 100 proof. I don't know if I said that before. I... Uh, what do you guys think about this on the nose? I think I uh, I had a little a little sneak peek of this, and I'm going to say this again. It smells better than any of the new post change Kentucky Owl products I've had. Yeah, and I think that's a big I compliment agree. to this. The nose smells like cherries and almost like cherries and chocolate a little bit. And a little bit of oak, but there's this cherry note in it that's really good. The the cherry carries through to the palate as well. I I don't mind this, y'all. Swan, you seem seem to be struggling a little bit more with it than we are. I'm doing some research. I'm, okay. I'm trying to I'm trying okay. to figure some things out. I like that, Swan. I don't know, like some that made me feel some sort of way. Swan I looked over the, there and he was like serious looking. I was like, damn. He was our computer guy. <laughs> he's like the guy. He's the man, man. He's the man in the chair. Swan yeah. the bourbon researcher. Yeah. Took that mustache. You put him in a van. <laughs> made him research stuff. <laughs> no, but this this smells great. It smells like cherries and chocolate to me. And palate definitely cherry up front. Um, I'm getting a little bit something on the end. I can't figure out what it is yet. I'm really wondering what this would have been like at a higher proof. Well, so I will, I will say to you, like a lot of Japanese whiskey, not that it can't, uh, but it doesn't usually get super high proof. I was going to say, I know a lot of those Nikas and stuff like that, Suntory stuff, like that's usually like not even 100 proof, right? They're usually lower proof. Well, so Nika from the barrel, I think, is like 104, 105. Yeah. So that's like, that's their cast rate. Right. But I would have liked, I would like to see, so this was blended by a Japanese blender, correct? Is that what, it, is that right? Yeah, in collaboration with, but the thing yeah. that... But all the whiskey is like, um, you know, American It's Kentucky whiskey, straight right? bourbon whiskey. Yeah, so. and I, I will say their wording specifically is showcasing Kentucky bourbon through the eyes of Japanese whiskey. Mm -hmm. Right. So they're not trying to make it taste like Japanese whiskey. They're just no. trying to implement some of the same blending techniques you right. would see in that. Right, right, right. Now, that being said, though, I mean, this at this point is not an innovation because this is essentially the the same idea behind Legion. Legion, right. Yes. Legion was partially finished, though. This is not. So this is 100% just Kentucky Stray Bourbon being blended by blended a Japanese by, blender. Yeah. Because the other one, they use the same technique that you would normally see out of some of the Suntory products, I believe, where they didn't just straight up finish it. They had some barrels finished, some not. They blended some of the finish gotcha. to the unfinished. This is just straight up a mixture of Kentucky whiskeys. Yeah. Man, I don't, I don't know if it's my mind. Like, I'm thinking of, like, Japanese, like, snacks now, though. And there is, like, a green tea Kit Kat note that there I get on the finish. There is definitely a green tea note in there. That's the finish that, I, that's what I was getting that I couldn't figure out. I'm like, what is that? What is that? And it's, like, the green tea candy chocolate and stuff. Like, that's cool. I like that. I think Swan's going to go get some Legion. I don't even, I think we've finished mine on portion. Oh, four yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah. I was going to grab mine, but, I mean, we'll let Swan do the legwork here. Swan work a little bit. Flap those wings. Doing research, boys. <laughs> did, Doing did you, research, boys. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you grab the leech? Oh, no, you oh. grabbed the Nika. Oh, okay. This is a... <laughs> I just want to see... It sounds, it sounds like we're narrating something that's, like, really catastrophic, but it's just Swan, <laughs> like... What you... you 
You got it's the knee. Just, what you, Swan, what are you doing with it? It's just Swan don't, don't doing do something don't that do we that. did not Swan, predict. stop. Swan, just, what are you doing? I just want to know. So, like, what's the similarity? <laughs> I'm sorry. I was thinking of that. Um, <laughs> I think I sent it to both of you all, but that reel or TikTok or whatever of the guy <laughs> saying whatever food you're putting in your face oh, yeah. hole right now. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Somebody please help me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Dude. I laughed so hard at that. It's you just... have sent some hitters. You and Swan. Like, I'll wake up and, like, I'll see, like, <laughs> Pete Ritter sent me a reel or my bourbon pod sent me a reel. Swan sent me a reel. I'm like, I got to go in here because I'm about to laugh. I'm about to, like, I'm about to laugh some farts out. So I got to sit on the toilet and watch these. My Crohn's can't handle all the laughter. Oh my gosh! Just pooping on myself with the laughter. Um, oh, anyway. anyway, yeah, sorry. So, on what has your research concluded? They are weirdly similar. Really, I believe that. Yeah. I believe so, that. one has definitely got more of a rye spice to it, and that is the tacum. Yeah. No shocker there, uh, but I will say the green tea note is somewhat similar. They have like an almost kind of all spicy vibe in both of them. They both have a slight almost butter note to them. The biggest difference that I'm noticing and I'll go back and try it. The Nika coffee grain whiskey which coffee spelled is in the still type. Um... Huh? It's coffee, C O F F E Y. It's not like actual like coffee. It's right? I coffee. have never noticed that before. Yeah. What, what is the what's the difference? So coffee was actually the last name of a guy that created a still. Yeah. And that still type is what they use for this whiskey. Swan, you, you definitely need to get back to being on the show more regularly because I learn something new every <laughs> single time that you're on. It. Yeah. That, <laughs> um, but usually they, it's they, just me and Eric making fart jokes and now like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talking about skin and stuff. But, yeah. but, <laughs> but they do have like a genuine like oiliness that you don't really get out of other whiskeys. Like yeah, I feel yeah, like they sure. shot for a texture... More so than they shot for like a flavor profile. I mean, there's some similarities, but it definitely, I, I see why, you know, maybe this wouldn't be at the top of some bourbon drinkers. Like for me, I don't like green tea that much. So for me, this is not going to rate well. Uh, but at the same time, like there's a there's an, a strange amount of similarities that you wouldn't normally get out of two separate types of whiskey. I, th- I think where this kind of, sits really well is that it's 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 different enough and interesting enough that if you were to put it in a tasting you would have a lot of people going well that's different you know and i'm not saying that that's the only thing that this sits on because it's not i mean this this has plenty of of uh, uh merit to it on its own it's just you know th- there is a uniqueness factor behind this this bourbon that i uh, i mean e- even you know i know i kind of jokingly said uh legion but i mean i i don't even think that it falls under the same umbrella that legion does like they they just seem to come from two completely different places i think honestly. that's the same the same concept but like when if if I was side by siding them, remembering what I thought about Legion, like this would be heads above it. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Here here is my here's my issue with this though. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to point fingers or anything. But for this to be the first product post change that we say is really good or deserves to be looked at or sought out by people uh and it took bringing another 
palette into the mix. Another blender. Um, what does that say about what's going on with them right now? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm no. really not trying to, you know, kick them when they're down or anything or, or knock their knees out. But I mean, we've talked about <laughs> Wiseman and we've talked about Batch Eleven and stuff like that, and like. I would drink and we've, this. And we've talked about the, yeah, well, no, you said Wiseman. Sorry, yeah. I interrupted yeah. you for nothing. No, no. <laughs> it's fine. But the, this is the first time I've been like, you know, I, I'm, I'm digging this. Like, yeah. I, I'm enjoying this. I'm finding notes that um, I like, I enjoy. Um, and, yeah, it's, I mean, if you step back and look at everything about this bottle, it's, you know, it may have the same brand name on it, but it's definitely, you know, it's got stuff that somebody else had a hand in it. So now, in in, I've I've had batch eleven. Um, have you had it yet, Eric? Yeah, we yeah. You let me have some of batch you eleven. Sam- you gave me a sample from Papa Ritter. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, when I you first got it. it, first got yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I we both agreed that it was good. It was good. It didn't have that that je, factor. Je ne sais quoi. <laughs> yeah, it didn't have that marshmallow, that toasted graham cracker that like just yep. hits you. Like, but it, it was, was still a really good bourbon. It was good, and and I think I think what I'm getting at is that we probably have been harsher than we needed to at times, based on the fact that. A good friend of ours is no longer involved with the brand. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I mean, we we did kind of need something to convince us that things were trending in the right direction for right. them. Also, that being said, we genuinely dislike the the wise man bourbon. Yeah, I, didn't I mean, like, it at all. like just just straight up, it's we both did not like it. Um, I, I have not it, had I placed it in my own category of. Bourbon no, gold gold medal in the poop category. <laughs> yeah, that was it. Yeah, I mean that's just how it is. Like, and and we're and we're not trying to be like, I, you know, the thing is like they're either not listening to what we say or they are listening and not caring about it. Right. But they were able to look past that enough to send us a bottle. Right. And so I think that that. Like and and when we do reviews of things that we don't like, it's not to, it's not to like discourage people from. But I mean, I guess in some ways it kind of is inherently, but it, it's not to like make enemies. I mean, it is an honest review, no. even if we have been sent something that is from a brand that we historically like. It just gets to the point where we're like, we can't do anything but be honest about what is in our glass. Right. And and the, it's Kentucky the most Owl, important thing with a review yes, is that the, we are honest. And the Kentucky Owl brand is a brand that we genuinely want to see. Like we like the brand and like, I yeah. would love to see it keep going. Like no matter who's part of it or whatever. And it's like, you, you don't want to go from seeing all these batches and these rise that are just amazing that, to something else it's like it is it's like you want to see it keep going up and unfortunately some of the products just haven't but yeah i I mean back to this one though like i genuinely enjoy this yeah i do too and i think that it is a a sign at the very (laughs) least that they might be trending back in the right direction that being said this is a a special release um that they collaborated with somebody else with on. Yeah. Can I throw... Can you... Do what you want to do, Swan. Okay. So, I looked up where uh, the distillery that he... The, the extra blender... What's his name again? I'm sorry. Can we pull that yeah, back he's up? A, yeah, he's a Yusuke. Yusuke. Okay. Uh, so, I, I looked at his distillery. Like it's this. Nagahama is the okay. distillery. Uh, so before we take price into consideration, if I find the most related product to what we're drinking right now that has a combination of malt, corn, and rye whiskeys uh, at 47%, uh, 
uh, you're you're looking at for a single 700 uh, ml bottle, probably about 200 to 350 bucks. Oh my gosh! So take that into consideration when we look at the price point. I think that's important. So that's from his distillery. Yes, so it's in collaboration with yet another distillery. So I think they kind of looked at this guy and realized, okay, he's doing good stuff. It's in collaboration with other people. Right. Uh, Because that Mm. one's from Nagahama and Saboramaru. So it's I mean it's like it, designers collabing with shoe brands. Like like the shoe is yeah. itself is like this, a normal price, but you bring this designer in who collabs, so you've got like this shoe slash this designer and it, it goes up a little bit in price. It's just what people want. That that may be fair and true, but that aside, the minimum age in this is a four year old bourbon. Yeah, like, yeah. and and I mean that is not going to be an easy pill to swallow for a lot of people when they consider the fact that this is one hundred and fifty dollars. They oh, also yeah. I they get also that. do have offerings as low as thirty dollars, but I, I will mention like if you're just looking at the flavor profile that this distillery usually puts out, it's apparently delicate apple, malt, spice, and complex. So you can kind of see some of the carryover between what he's used to making and what we've got in our glass. Hmm. There's a good chunk of stuff I'm just going to cut out (laughs) as we try to figure out where to go next. (laughs) I just love Swan, the bourbon researcher. researcher. Yeah. Listen, I got two screens now. I feel, I feel, feel good Damn. about it. I got, yeah, I got, I got the two as well. But I got I, two uh, screens. <laughs> what the hell? What the hell? No, goodness gracious. I think that we've kind of talked around this enough, but I, I, I guess it's time for us to actually review it. Uh, but we have a review system of nose, palette, finish, and price. As I said, nose, my nose got a little stuffy too, so... <laughs> Take that for what you will. Uh, but yeah, nose palette, finish, and price. Each category is out of five. Final score out of 20. Multiply by five if you want to know what we think about this out of 100 in the American uh, scale of grading. Whatever. I don't care. Uh, what do you guys think about this one on the nose? Um, I think the nose is probably my favorite part. I give it a four. Um, I don't know. There's this just nice burst of like cherry that's just refreshing when I smell it. And it, it's one of those that I could just smell Ooh. probably more than I could keep sipping on. Like, I just want to smell it. Like, it's like ch- cherry, like starburst and like a little bit of chocolate and stuff. Uh, for me, I'm, I'm probably going to give it a two and a half. Uh, it does have that green tea note. I've, I've not, I've not enjoyed that in like anything that I've ever had. But I just it's not it's not going to be something for for Swan. But at the same time, that's important because you know there's some people that maybe go with your palate, realize like oh I also don't like green tea. This is probably not your your whiskey. Yeah. Um. But it it does it does definitely have that. I feel like if it had a little more citrus or a little bit more leaned into some of the um kind of baking spice kind of thing along with it, it could be good. But it, it does hit you over the head with there's that green not tea a, Kit Kat. There's not a lot of dark, dark bakery spices in this. Not no, not, not at, any all. at all. But I, I will say though, and it, it wasn't until I started going back to it, trying to figure out what I thought about it, review wise. Uh, there is a savory note that just keeps jumping out at me on the nose that I love. I mean, it, it started getting me thinking about what kind of dish I would. I would pair this with and I can't help but think of like a like a shrimp lo mein or something as a a, a dish to go with this especially nose wise but I, I could definitely see pairing this with something shrimp savory. fried rice yeah, yeah. rice yeah. something like that it would go perfect with that not as much like a dessert with like bakery stuff because there's none there but savory yeah. this no, is this a is, savory this is pairing it all day definitely for sure um, I, I don't know if that's enough for me to be like, oh, this is amazing and everything. But I do think that it is genuinely very unique, and it's something that will surprise people uh, with the the way that it 
it presents itself. I'm going to give it a 3.5 on the nose. Palette. Palette. <laughs> Just shoo your cat away. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, <laughs> Palette. I'm really surprised with how much I like this. Uh, I'm, uh, that's not a reason to give it a good score, I, but it just kind of is a, another factor into everything. Um, maybe I'll, let me take another sip, actually. Somebody else do it there. <laughs> uh, I gave it a 2.5 because it was kind of right in the middle for me. Like I, I didn't mind the palette. I thought it was okay. I get I like the finish more than the palette, so my score goes back up on the finish, which I'll get into then. But like, it's kind of like average. Like, it hits me with the cherry nose, and then I want another big hit of cherry, but it's kind of mellows out a little bit on the palette, which yeah. is not necessarily a bad thing. I just don't get a lot of those notes that I'm enjoying until the finish. So I gave it a two point five. I actually gave mine a three. I went up a little bit. <laughs> um. I I feel like the and this is going to sound bad, but I feel like you get a little extra heat on the palate that maybe when you got to the nose you weren't expecting, but I like it. I actually do like it. Swan, I'm I'm right on board with you though. I I this isn't my favorite drinker, but I do think that I find a lot of value in in what this is. Uh I like it a little bit less than the palate. I gave it a 3. <laughs> or excuse me, the nose. So I gave the palate a 3. Yeah. You know, if I if I kind of like, <laughs> it looks like a disapproving dad <laughs> or principal <laughs> like, or something. You knew better than this. I'm not can't, mad. Can't I'm just disappointed. Do you, you got know, real Ron Swanson to do that? You no. Know? Do you know the stress that you have put me and your mother through tonight? Do you want to do that to your mother? How dare! <laughs> Anyway. I feel like you could be an extra in, um, in oh shoot, I'm forgetting. Never mind. I, I <laughs> can't mind. do it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this is a good talk. I'm, I'll, if it comes to me, I'll just scream it out. It'll be okay. <laughs> just in the middle Super of Super Troopers, maybe? Shenanigans? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I feel like you could be an extra yeah. in that. Like a cop in the background. Yeah. Meow. I'd have to, like, I'd Rat stick meow. my stick my belly out more and just make sure I have like four donuts in one hand. Right, meow. <laughs> <laughs> meow. Did you just say meow? Meow? Maybe you're the star of Super yeah, Troopers 3. <laughs> yeah, if that movie ever gets made. I hope. Finish, though. Finish. This is the weakest part for me. And it's not even because like it... it is bad it's just it's very flat i mean that that's when i start to get this like uh flat cherry cola <laughs> note you know what it, it reminds me of the old ezra seven that's exactly what i was thinking especially with that that Ooh, tasting note makes sense with my score then because i really like that bottle <laughs> It reminds me of uh, that. Yeah, one one point five for me on the the finish. Damn. Go ahead, Swan. I gave it a two. Eric. Um. Three point five. <laughs> wow. Love, okay. Wow. That's what I said earlier. Like I love the finish more than the palette because I get yeah. all the stuff, all the notes on the finish. Yeah. I like the green tea Kit Kat, so I like that, and I get that m the majority on the finish. That's why my finish is higher than the palette. And then you all start talking about this is the weakest one, and then you're like old Ezra Seven, and I'm like, oh my god, I really like old Ezra Seven. I really like that. So that makes sense. Three point five <laughs> for me, baby. <laughs> I'll take this finish all day. Uh, will it? <laughs> Old is seven. Do, 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 what else you got? <laughs> what else I got? Don't even. <laughs> go drink your scotch. Jesus. I know. I was able to go get some, some Japanese whiskey. I don't know. Like, fuck me right all right. right what, about, what about the price, though? This is $150. I know that this definitely mm. is like getting into the... Uh, 
getting into the the premium side of things. I cut it in half. I gave it a 2.5 because I think if this was slashed in half at the price, if this was 75 bucks, I'd be into it. Yeah. 2.5. I got to cut it. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't disagree with that. I'm going to give it a 2.5 as well. I gave it a two. Yeah. I think it's an interesting concept. I think it's great if you really buy into it, but it's going to take somebody like me that wanted to go on here, look at the research behind it, figure Nerd. out why the pricing is the way it is. That's just not your typical customer. And I I mean, even with Kentucky Owl, like there's people that like the collectability aspect of it, and I get that, but they have their collectible line, and then this is not in it. You know, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I would... I don't mind having this around. I well, I, I mean, I get that, but it's not like they're numbered like this is bad. Yeah, yeah, whatever. yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, and it's not it's not falling into that. So I I just don't see people being as drawn to this as they would like a Kentucky Owl batch or that. Yeah, no, I I I get that, but this this to me is still it, I, again it goes back to me saying that this is something that could be interesting for people to have at a bourbon tasting or some kind of bourbon gathering. And, um, it's different enough. I think it's, uh, it's got enough going for it that people could latch onto that. I would say, if you see it, pick it up. If you have the extra cash, uh, to, to pick it up, do so as well. Um, but I, so I figured for five years we're gonna change things up a little bit. I uh, and I wanted to do something extra special uh, for for a review. And uh, I if if I recommend something, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, utilize this uh, little little device, I guess. Uh, but I got a "You're the Best" trophy today. <laughs> oh my. Um, to K- Kentucky Owl Takumi Edition. Oh, that's so nice. You're the best. You're the best. Yeah. Um, so I recommend. I recommend it. Somebody, go get it. So, I uh, I'm trying to figure out whether or not I want to drink out of this thing too. <laughs> I think you should. I think I think the ever everything that gets a you the best should have one pour poured in it and you drink out of it. And if we're together, I'll take a drink out of it. And if Swan's there, he'll take a drink out of it. And we'll just give each other COVID. Mm. It does not taste good out of that. Why? <laughs> Got to season it a little bit. I guess so. Um, also, if I have something that I don't like, I'm just gonna put a little worse. You're the you're the worst. Oh, and you still drink out of it. Well, yeah, I think you have to. I don't know. That's gonna be the new thing. I love this. Isn't I that like great? This a lot. I like yeah. this a lot. Yeah. So, I uh, the first official year the best. Way to go, Kentucky Al Takumi Kentucky Daddy. Kentucky Al Takumi edition. Uh, this week's You're Swan's the Best. Swan's not impressed. Look at him. Yeah, you, I, I, I like the trophy. I just I I wouldn't give it the You're the Best. That's it. But well, I mean, you got well, two Swan, recommends out of three today. Swan yeah. Swan would say Kentucky Al Takumi. Uh, you're the worst. Worst, <laughs> worst whiskey ever. <laughs> yeah. According to Swan, extreme, worst whiskey but. ever. Put that on the. Uh, on the uh, advertisement. The good thing is, too, I can I can erase. I know. This. I see that it's erased. So we can just use, each, keep using each it each time. Yeah, uh, it works great for game nights too. For anybody who you know, if they they win, like they can just write their name on it, and until the next game night, you get to keep it. I like that. It's really like bad that out of that. Really bad out of that chalice. You, anyway, you just ate off all the fake gold on there. You yes, just drank it all. So. We'll we'll move into tips and bits here in a second. Um, I wanted to give you guys the opportunity to, uh, I, and I don't I don't want to like pat myself on the back or anything. But in addition to the tips and bits that we have this week, uh, I wanted to maybe because this could be an episode that people jump onto the podcast f- for through. Uh, I I would like for you guys, and I'm sorry I'm putting you on the spot. Uh, to recommend an episode of the podcast for people to listen to that you think maybe either encapsulates uh, Tim Bip the most or would be 
I a favorite for someone to revisit or one to just go and check out? Maybe it kind of fell under the radar or something like that. I've got one. It's okay. the first one takeover episode. <laughs> I <laughs> recommend that one too. <laughs> yeah, it's the it's the mash bill to uh, blind flight that I gave you and Kurt. Yeah, find the episode number so I can tell everybody. That was Whoa. a great, great episode. Um, How far been, back would that have been? <laughs> would have been in 2020. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember sh- like even where I was sitting when I recorded that episode because it was at my kitchen table and I was like, "How authentic! Like this is great." <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was it was interesting. Uh, but I, I enjoyed it because I even came up with like alternate phrases for every um, segment. Uh huh. Yes, you did. And I just was so proud of myself. And at the end, I looked at uh, <laughs> my ex now, but I just I was like, that was the <laughs> stupidest thing I've ever done. What? <laughs> I got, gonna have to edit this. I got I got the episode number if Eric does One twenty eight. It's yeah. called "This Is a Hostile Swan Takeover." I yeah. uh, plus Blanton's Hancock's Reserve and Rock Hill Farms shootout. Man, yeah, that was a that was a minute ago. <laughs> Honestly, though, that's one of our most popular episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even joking. I, well, it's, it's all it, BT stuff. It's not like it was there wasn't any it, extra special you're, sauce you're right. other than the BT stuff. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Goodness gracious. Uh, but you, it, do we want to do Tim Bip stuff first before we get to the uh, the actual Tim, uh, tips, Tim's and Bits? Uh, tips and Bits, or do we do you just want to go ahead and do your uh, normal Tips and Bits one? Oh, uh, no, I'm going to need a minute on the Tips and Bits. i got to be honest. i got to oh, filter everything over the last couple of weeks. <laughs> what, what you got for your favorite episode, your, your uh, under-the-radar episode there, Eric? Me, yeah. well, the freaking one the the my debut, baby. No, I'm just like, man, it was no. That <laughs> was a, that, that was a really fun episode, though. It was. Um, it's a but, big difference between the way that Eric acts yeah. now on the podcast versus then. <laughs> oh yeah, lots of. <laughs> I say fuck a lot more now. Um, <laughs> but one of my favorite episodes, and this is going way back. So anybody that's kind of listened recently, this is definitely one to check check out is episode 54 um this is kentucky owl with dixon deadman it's probably you took mine <laughs> well that's it's what okay. i do baby. that's okay no, it's okay it it's okay that no. was uh, yeah it's easily one of perry's best interviews and i think if if anybody anybody listening i don't care if you're uh if you have another podcast or our YouTube or anything, if you question Perry's uh, interviews, ab- interviewing ability, like just listen to this one and you'll understand why he's so good at interviews. So I really appreciate that. It's that, true. that was the, I think that was the, the not think I know that was the defining moment when I realized that I could do so much more with the podcast than just doing reviews or sitting down with my buddies and drinking. Like I could actually interview people. And, and like the nice thing about that too, with, with Dixon is we were already friends. Like we already knew each other. We already had a relationship, but it, it just went a long way towards, being able to have a very, very genuine conversation with each other. Uh, and it just, yeah, I, I think that it, it it's one of those where if people recommend or people ask what episode should I, I go and kind of start with, that's a really good one yeah. to get into things with. Um, sorry, Eric, I interrupted you. <laughs> what? No, no, you just said that's exactly what you took. You, you took all the words out of my mouth. Yeah. yeah. You made it sound better. I don't know good words. So, <laughs> but um, seriously, that's a great episode. So 
I want to. I'm I'm going to use this to uh, highlight a few kind of guest spot episodes uh, that I think are. Oh, that time you made Matt Porter cry. Yeah. (laughs) Whatever episode that is. uh, Can I give an honorable mention to the wrapping up of one of the episodes by Fred Gilbert? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I was on that one. (laughs) Yeah. I guess actually that was your debut, Eric. Was that I was, uh, I was, I was the, just a, a special, a special guest on that the 2021 one. meetup yeah. episode um, with Fred one of Gilbert the Gilbert with the best funniest. closing. Oh my gosh! Um, yeah, I. <laughs> sorry, I just now I have to think about him saying, "Do I have nut on my face?" And then you just ended. <laughs> and it's the end of the episode. Yeah, yeah um, let's wrap it up. If any any time that I we have had uh, Chad and Sarah on the show, uh, it has been absolutely just pure magic. Um, Fred to Fred Minnick, uh, any time that he has been on, uh, it's it's been some of the best conversation, and it kind of goes back to like Fred and I are friends, so it it makes for a good time. Uh, to actually be had, uh, the dad's drinking bourbon episode that I did with with John uh, back in uh, January of twenty one, as things were kind of shifting, uh, and we were trying to figure out what to do with the podcast uh, at that point. Um, yeah, I, I, Grease and Will have been on multiple episodes too, and uh, but I I think I think you're right though that. That episode with Porter, when we were talking about Beagle Rare. Yeah. And so this this was the first, like, whiskey tube community project that he did. Uh, And the second one (laughs) was supposed to have been done by now, but uh, I think he still has that. No, he doesn't have it. Oh. The yeah, a different conversation. Um, but originally, like it, you know, his his plan was to have uh, Dixon finish off the blend, uh, and they would auction it off for charity, and then we would have a big like meet up party and everything uh, to celebrate the the success of Beagle Rare, and. Uh, extenuating circumstances <laughs> began to happen uh, around that time. And we realized we weren't able to all get together, but it was important to me uh, to be able to share with, with Matt uh, directly the thoughts that Dixon had about being involved in all this and presenting him with a bottle of Kentucky Owl bourbon, uh, it was magical. I, I mean, like I know that I know that we joke and we go, oh, it, you know, it's when we made Matt Porter cry. <laughs> but it's so much, it's cried. so much more than that, man. It's so much more than that. Uh, it's you have I, to listen I, to it to like yeah. You do, yeah, and and I feel, and I don't I don't mean to. <clears throat> like insert myself in this way, but I I feel a little sense of like ownership in ADHD whiskey too, because I mean that was an early early kind of step towards him figuring out that he could do his own channel and you know be a part of the community <clears throat> at large. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, if if nothing else, and I I know I said that. <laughs> at the beginning of the show too about uh being able to look back and see my own growth through things uh but it, it, if if nothing else um the community is the most important part of this podcast and we're all over the daggone place baby we are all <laughs> around the world yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and Eric sings I do. a lot too. A lot. I'm sure somebody's going to complain about that too. They laugh and they <clears> sing <throat> too much. I think that has been one of the more recent criticisms that <laughs> you sing too much. Yeah. But well, uh, anyway, uh, we we got regular tips and bits. We too, do for people. So, what do you guys have to recommend this week? Oh, it hit me. I finally. I took me a while. I was thinking about it and looking it up on my phone while you were talking there. He didn't uh, listen to a word you said. He's been concentrating so hard. I, you know, sometimes it's like that, Eric. Just gotta. <laughs> just it just be like that, like some now. I did watch a really really good documentary. I, I'm not even a big sports fan, but uh, the Last Dance on Netflix. Nice. On Netflix. Yeah. There uh, you go. There you go. Great. It's, it's really yeah. good. Great. Really I've actually good. not watched it yet. I, I still have it's, not gotten around to good. it. But it, it, I mean. You know everything that people say about it. Yeah, I think Swan was, nailed it. He, you don't have to really be into sports to actually enjoy hey, this. You don't really have to be into bourbon to listen to this in my bourbon podcast. Exactly. Yeah. Ten bit. Yeah. Roll it. Well, and the funny thing is, it's like I found myself getting recommended either reels, YouTube, whatever. Like here's the clips from this documentary, and then I've when, as I was watching, I was like, I've seen this. I've seen this. <laughs> I know I've seen this before. <laughs> I was sitting on my couch, like, having an epiphany. And I, I was like, oh, <laughs> it's just a really good documentary, and people have been stealing their content. Awesome. That's how I, that's how I feel with horror movies right now, because I'm going through a phase where I just am watching the classics that I never really got I've around to watching. I've heard people talk about like, that. I know, I know what this is. I get this. Oh, wow, I get this now. Sorry. So clicks. It, does, watch it, does. it really is good. It, I, it drags on. <laughs> Just a little bit uh, towards the later episodes, uh, but it is very good. Nice. I like it. Do I they like talk at all too. about um, MJ playing baseball? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. good. Well, there you go. Yeah, there you go. they do. A very fun time in sports. <laughs> Goes through his whole career, like not all retirement, baseball, coming back, all of it. Gotcha. Yep. Eric. Um... Uh, are we going to do, do you want to do the Strangers review next week for Ended on Halloween? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. We'll yeah. do that. Because I, I watched, a, a, I've seen a couple other yeah. spooky I've movies. Other stuff too. Since, since last week, so we um, got enough to talk about. Uh, watch Smile last night. It's a horror movie right now. I would How, say uh, it's, yeah. it's okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's okay. Just okay. It's okay. Um, I think... I put there's a category that I've been like when I watch certain horror movies now that I give that's the preteen teen good scary movies. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I, yeah, yeah. My I took Addison and her friends. They are 14, 15 years old, and Eli ended up going. He's eleven, preteen. Oh, so that was the needing to sleep in Mama's bed. Yeah, post that so, you made today. Okay, so there we go. This movie Smile is very jump scare um focused uh something that i would say that like strangers the first strangers is very focused on um but we'll get into that later um but there's not like this big body count thing it's very jump scare kind of weird scary movie that a 11 to 14 year old would piss their pants at watching the whole time (laughs) me i'm having I'm enjoying the movie, but I'm having more fun watching them, like, kind of hide their eyes and stuff like that. I will say, probably one of the, the, towards the end, the last scenes is one of the craziest looking things I've seen in a while. And they nailed it on the scale. Like I was crazy. Waiting, I was waiting for it. You took a while yeah, to, yeah, to I'll get saving, to you. I was saving it. I didn't want to make anybody wreck. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I wanted to make sure they finished the episode. Um, but yeah, I think it, I think Smile is good. <laughs> I'm not going to say Smile is like revolutionary, but it's good. Um, if you've ever watched It Follows, it has kind of the same premise, but in a different gotcha. way. Okay. Um, it's it follows it it follows kind of that same device, I guess you would say. Yeah. Um, so that I watched. Um, uh, Bleach uh, anime just started back after 10 years. Dang! Yeah, I'm very happy about that. 
Um, I've already read this story because he wrote the whole story. The comics and the manga came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't wait. I've read it all, but now it's fun going back and but, watching it. But, I mean, like, you're, you're reading all the, the Dragon Ball Super manga, too. I mean, and they're on a yeah. big hiatus before yeah. the next couple seasons come out. But, yeah, I but mean, yeah, like, I don't think that that's... It doesn't, like, spoil anything. No, 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 because, especially Bleach, because I've read it, it's been so long that I'm trying to remember, like, oh, this part's going to happen, this part's going to happen. Like, it's it's awesome. Um, so, so what took so long for them to get to producing the next season? Uh, he, so it, the manga kind of drew out a little bit, so it took a while for that, and then just, like, I don't know, it was like a studio thing. Like, the studio didn't pick it back up and all that. and Right. It was mainly, I think, the the actual story took a little bit longer to finish after. Because they put out the original anime up to that point really fast. And then he was still finishing that. So, it just took a little extra time to do it. And then yeah. it kind of got put on the back burner. Then COVID. Like, it, it originally was going to come out like four years ago. Then that happened. And all gotcha. the studios shut down. The anime studios shut down and stuff like that. Because they all wow. work in these buildings and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, that, yeah. The new Bleach. That's great. Um, and the last thing is there's another new anime. But this is the first season starting. It's called Chainsaw Man. And um, have we talked about that recently? I feel like, I, uh, or maybe I just I, maybe heard I it I just from somebody else. You, I think so. Uh, and mentioned that it started. Like it just yeah. started. It's on Crunchyroll. It's also on Hulu. Um, and it's a great anime to start if you're into just like kind of weird. Um, it's basically like these monsters or demons are around, and they these people have to go hunt and kill them. Well, this one kid is friends with one, and then he ends up getting kind of the power. So he's kind of like a hybrid thing. So he's like the chainsaw man, and like nice. he goes and hunts these demons and monsters. And it just started. I've read a little bit of the manga. I know it's a great show, um, but it's cool, cool. if you just want to start an anime that's kind of weird, bloody, but has a great story, great soundtrack, great animation. So, I. I need to check that out then. You guys yeah. have both recommended things that I really want to <laughs> watch and get into now. Um, I I'll, I've watched I watched three movies over the past week, uh, and I will talk about them in most to least favorite. And uh, yeah, I I saw for the first time Halloween, the yeah. original. Uh, which was amazing and so yes. much fun and wild. There was a lot of stuff that they got away with in the 70s that uh, would take a little bit more to get away with now in the 2020s. 1979, um, I think, right? 78. So, 78. Yeah. 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 Um, also, Jamie Lee Curtis has looked exactly the same since she was like yeah. 19. She's still hot. The, well, it's not. No. What she is? That's not, that's not what I mean. I just mean like she she looks like she she has not aged. No. Since then, I mean she she still looks great. You're right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, such a good movie, man. I I can't wait to to get into all the other ones except for the last two that have come out and everybody says not been great. So wait till you go oh. back and you watch the ones between. Like when they oh, did, like, good. yeah, it's yeah, it's a wild really roller coaster great. with Halloween, baby. Can't can't wait for that. I uh, then I Lucy and I watched Interview with a Vampire, uh -huh. which I had never seen before. Um, that is one of the horniest movies I've ever seen. Mm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you, I was getting ready to say young Kirsten Dunst there, and you, you, she's like twelve in that yeah, movie, yeah. my guy. I, <laughs> All I was saying is that that's a young Kirsten Dunst, but then you said what you said, and I was yeah. like, "That's probably not the best thing to say." No, not point. a good, not a good time to say that. No, but no, no. If I, what did I say? If if that movie had been made now, um, Chris Hemsworth would have definitely been in the Brad Pitt role. Oh yes, a hundred percent. I know that everybody says, well, you know, Tom Cruise was like the Robert Downey Jr. of the time. I don't feel like. RDJ would have fit into that role that that well though. No. 
maybe like 10 years ago, it would have been a little bit more fitting for him. And then like a fanning being the Kirsten Dunst character, L or uh, uh, Dakota, <laughs> one, yeah. of the, one of the two. I don't know. Maybe, maybe Chloe Grace Moretz. I don't yeah, know. I At that time, that. would have yeah. been kind of good. Um, I didn't. I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. I was just kind of middle of the road. Like, oh, well, that's two hours. I'm never gonna get back. And I mean, there was a lot of like me making jokes about what was going on in the movie and uh, this. Just it was something. <laughs> um, but then also something else I watched. I saw today in theaters, and I kind of wish I had seen. Um, Smile or Terrifier 2 yes. instead. But I went to go see Black Adam. Mm. And the silence says it all. Look, look. Is your tip not to see this movie? <laughs> I would say wait till streaming. I would say wait until streaming. Yeah. Um there are a couple things in it that are really good and really cool. But the rest of the movie is just like The Rock filming a a pre wrestling match video, and it's not it's not very good. <laughs> it's really not very good. Um, I have never I have not seen a movie use the amount of slow mo shots that they did since The Matrix. Oh. And I, th- this movie could have been about fifteen to twenty minutes shorter for how, <laughs> how many slow mo slow-mo shots there were. I was baffled by it, and it looks really pretty. I mean, it's a really good looking movie, but overall, it is a slog <laughs> to get through. And it, it took me about it's. I mean, it's like a two hour movie. It took me about an hour before I actually laughed at any of the jokes that were told. I mean, everything else up until then was like, oh, you have got to be kidding me. Um, some of the wonkiest CGI I have ever seen uh, in, a, in a movie, especially a superhero movie. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't talk about too much else without getting into spoilers. But yeah, uh, just just wait. Just wait until it's on oh, streaming. Okay. Um, but boy, howdy, is there a moment that I almost cried over. So it's probably already been spoiled for you, but let me just say, <laughs> everything about it works. Everything about the that moment just made me feel warm and tingly. So anyway, um, I'm going to let you wrap up here in just a second, Eric, uh, but... I wanted to take a moment to be extra sentimental um, and say thank you to a bunch of people who have helped this show uh, get to the point where it is now and also to uh, wax poetic, I suppose. Um, I have to say, first and foremost, uh, thank you to my wife, Lucy, uh, for allowing me to take the time away to do as much as I have with this show over the past five years um, and still be willing to support everything about it because uh, th- this has been a labor of love and time-consuming and exhausting, but it has been one of the best things that I have ever ventured into and I think that she sees that and and appreciates that and understands <laughs> that I I kind of need this now um so thank you Lucy and I love you for allowing me to thanks Lucy <laughs> do all this um Papa Ritter <laughs> too Dad and I actually recorded. I, I, I don't know if I've ever said this, but the first episode I actually recorded of the podcast uh, wound up being episode three, uh, and it was with my dad. Uh, so he was kind of my my guinea pig uh, for figuring out how this uh, 
how this show worked and uh you know of course it's changed a bunch over the years but uh it is very much still in the spirit of things then uh speaking of that uh curtis and tanner for being uh the the original backbone and fabric and dna of this show uh and going back and listening to those first few episodes I uh, I really feel like um, their spirit still kind of lives on throughout this show, uh, which is a weird thing to say about somebody who has moved on from a project like this. But it is not. Uh, it, it, this show is not as in as different as some people may think uh, from the way it was back then. Um, Chad and Sarah from its bourbon night uh for always kind of being in my corner and being there when i needed you know to fill some space in those early days will and grease for being uh my my big <laughs> my big brothers uh in the the podcasting space uh john edwards from dad's drinking bourbon for uh being the first person in this game to give me any kind of feedback that made me feel like i was on the right track. Um, that is something that I think of almost daily, uh, in all of this. Um, gosh, Kenny and Ryan <laughs> from bourbon pursuit for being the first ones to tell me that I made it. Uh, Fred Minnick for being the mentor that I never really thought I needed, uh, until he kind of came along. I, uh, the guests that have come and gone throughout the past five years, uh, whether it's my, my father-in-law, uh, or the Carters or Dixon or gosh, I, I can't even, I can't even name all of them. Uh, but it's, it's just been such a fun time getting to meet new people and to chat with them and, I, I, I think I've hit the, the almost end of the road, but the, you guys, the listeners, uh, for being a part of this too, and for allowing us to be a part of your life and for making the choice to listen to and enjoy what we do on a weekly basis. Uh, and then you two guys as well. Uh, I'm, I'm only as good as the support that I have behind me. And the both of you have been such amazing, encouraging, patient uh, partners in all of this. And I don't know if I can ever express that that love and that uh, appreciation that I have for you guys more. Um, but, you know, this is my bourbon podcast is what it is now because of the both of you all. And just very, very thankful. Very, very thankful for you guys. Uh, Five years is a long time to be doing any one thing, but it's a good one. It's been it's been a good five years, and y'all y'all have uh, <clears throat> you've helped me you've helped me a lot. You've helped me a lot, and I think that speaks for itself. But thank you both. Thank you. <laughs> Make me get all getting sorry. all teary eyed over here. Man. I ain't supposed to I'm be sorry. that way. I'm sorry. I Ooh. ain't supposed to be that way. I guess you're the, you're the one supposed to be talking about foreskin and whatnot. Oh well, well, that's <laughs> that's me. Right we can there, do both. We're multifaceted. You know. Yeah, how it is. yeah. That's yeah, 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 me, yeah. baby. Yeah, you you got to car- compartmentalize or whatever. Uh, oh. But yeah, man, Love this you. has been Love so you. much fun. 
I love you guys. I, th- th- this is just, I can't, I can't imagine my life without Tim Bip. I don't know you what else to say. You don't have to. Other than that. Yeah. So. <sighs> Eric, do you want to bring us home? I mean, yeah. I mean, if you want to continue to. Uh, Man, I don't have much else to say. <laughs> make uh, Perry choke up and talk about skin. Uh, you can go over to patreon.com where you can support the show for as little as a dollar a month. And at $5, you get all the bonus content, all the extra stuff, all the uncut stuff, the stuff that we mentioned in the main episode that you don't understand unless so, you're on fucking Patreon. So do so that. It, let, me, let me talk about Patreon for a second, too. Um, I got a I got an email the other day saying that we had a new patron, but when I went to go look to see if we had a new patron, Is it wasn't trying to be sneaky? popping up. I don't know what happened here, but I got an email on Friday saying that Bill Robarge was a new patron at the five dollar tier but i didn't get that notification on patreon so bill tell me what are you doing man (laughs) did you meet did you meet eric at a at a meat counter somewhere or oh he definitely got threatened in a meat counter that's the only way you had to have yeah i told him i told him that wisconsin uh isn't the only place that makes good cheese and i told him that his choice of meat sucks because he was trying to just put cheese all over everything. I said, get some good beef and add oh, a little bit of sprinkle on there. So that's like that. that's not the single best use of cheese? <laughs> no. <laughs> not to cover your meat. He was trying to take a tomahawk steak, prime tomahawk steak, and put cheese all over it. Because he said, you know what? It doesn't matter if it's got any taste. If it's got cheese on it, I love Wisconsin, so it's I like, I like cheese. And I said, what the fuck? you doing son get up on patreon get up on there and i'll tell you how to make some meat with a little bit of cheese adds a little bit of flavor you don't have to cover it all you cheese head mother and he he said you know what i'll go sign up i think he might have been already and something just glitched well but anyway i like to believe that what eric described is exactly (laughs) what happened to a t no differentiation. Actually, actually, that Swan, you're, you're you're probably right. Yeah, you're probably Jesus. right. I'll, gi- I'll give Eric the benefit yeah, of the doubt there. Head. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Patreon.com. Get on there. Um, <laughs> if you want to send us an email, <laughs> the email. You want to send us a message. You want to send us like uh, something that you want us to review. You want to send us a sample. We'll send you an email. Let uh, us know your back. favorite I'm moments. I'm going to put our fucking address on here right now. I'm go- you're going to have to send us an email. Oh, I thought you were talking about the email still. Oh, this is my bird shop at gmail.com. Yeah, tell us your favorite moment over the past five years. Yeah. I'm genuinely curious. Like there, there have been a lot of things that we've. Uh, yeah. Ooh, that we've done uh, since October of 2017, but let us let us freaking know, let us man. Know. Yeah, let us know. If you want to get some merch that says "This is my bourbon drinking shirt," "This is my bourbon podcast," you go to bourbon Sundays shop. are for Threadless. bourbon. Com. Sundays are for bourbon. Jesus ain't looking at you when you're drinking all that bourbon on Sunday. <laughs> Wear that's the exactly, shirt. That's exactly how he covers his eyes. Yeah, too. he does it like this, <laughs> like that. Bourbonshop.threadless.com. I can't see you. If you want a Whiskey Mutant shirt, you can go to whiskeymutant.myshopify.com and get you a Whiskey Mutant shirt. Um, If you want to leave us a barrel rings, which is a voicemail, which I think we have a special one this week. Yeah, it should should have actually already come out. Um, It is a... What I've been calling a brief history of Timbip. Yeah, uh, so if you're if you're a little bit behind, this is a good way for you to get caught up uh, mm. via our, our dear dear friend and and Timbip historian uh, Todd Cooper uh, helped us uh, recount the the many long days and fruitful nights yes. of, of this yes. my bourbon podcast. But so yeah, if, that should be out now. If you want to leave the voicemail. And we'll play it on the air. And you'll get to be on a podcast. This is your easiest way. 859-428-8253. Leave a voicemail. We'll play it. We'll reply to it. You'll be like the fourth co-host. Or seventh. Or something like that. Uh, um, I, I don't know anymore. Yeah. 
Uh, <laughs> if you want to follow us on all social media, it's at My Bourbon Pod, um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, YouTube. Uh, if you want to follow me, it's at Whiskey Mutant. If you want to follow Perry on his personal stuff, see the little picture, the little baby, the little two year old, go to P Raider 1792. And if you want to follow Swan himself, it's at Swan TBF. He's only exclusive to finding bourbon right now, so don't even message him. But you can go like his post. And if you're really good friends with him, he'll send you reels that you can wake up to and laugh a lot and almost poop on yourself because that's what he does to me. Um, <laughs> if you want, if you want to watch the show on YouTube, it's this is my bourbon podcast on YouTube. Uh, you can watch us right now as we are looking at you in the camera. Um, and then Perry goes live every Thursday night at eight. Um, he has guests. He he drinks a lot of old fashions. Sometimes he gets too sick many, and he doesn't too many show up on there. Um, but you know he'll let you know if he's not going to be live. That's the thing. Yeah. He always is communicating with you. Um, and then leave a five star, four star, three star, two star, one star review. We'll read it. We don't care. Hopefully five. Hopefully five. Read a five. If you leave a one star review, I'll probably cuss you out. Um, cause you're a little bitch. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, leave a five star oh, review. Oh man. And then just tell everybody about us. Tell your do you friends. Me, do you want me to read my favorite review over the past five years? Yes. We're going to end that with that. After this you is, tell your friends, Perry's going to read a review, his favorite review ever. This is, this is a one star review from August 30th of 2018. 2018. Ex- okay. Ex- extended bros phone call. If a rambling 90-minute pointless conversation is a genre, then this is it. It's like two bros rambling in a pointless conversation. I found it a waste of time, not entertaining, and poor audio quality. Uh, Much better choices such as Bourbon Pursuit, Dad's Drinking Bourbon, and (laughs) Sip Suds and Smokes. Sip Suds and Smokes doesn't even exist anymore, I don't think. Sip Suds and Smokes. Is this something that you're drinking and washing your car at the same time? You son of a bitch. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. But, uh, you know, I I know that I already awarded the You're the Best trophy earlier to uh, Kentucky Owl, but I figured uh, I had to give it to the listener this week as well. Oh, yeah. What was was that guy's name? The Broski? That was... Uh, spotted turkey. Spotted turkey. Okay. Yeah, spotted turkey. <laughs> yeah. What is spotted turkey? Was he spotted? Is it a turkey with spots? Swan, what is a spotted turkey? You're you're of the the uh, the of bird the fowl family. Variety. The fowl. Vol- what is that? Turkey that got caught, man. He got yeah, spotted. Exactly. Motherfucker got caught and he was just trying to take all his anger out on the podcast. You know what He's I probably say? Probably not even around anymore. You know what I say to spotted turkey? You're the oh crap. Worst. Worst. <laughs> worst. You're the worst turkey, spotted turkey. <laughs> I hope you're still listening, you son of a I just hope you're listening and you're laughing and you're going, you know what? They they really they I actually like them, but I'm just go. being here we go. Turd. Worst <laughs> spotted turkey. You're the worst. Right. <laughs> I like this new trophy thing that I've introduced. Yeah, I do too. It's Especially dumb. when spotted turkey gets called out. Yeah. Anyway, um, I I think turkey. we need to get out of here because go hide I'm... Jimmy's leg. You... All right. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think that does it for this week. Uh, and it uh, is a good way for us to kick off. Five more years of this show. I I love you all so much. Thank you so much for supporting this show. Thank you for being a part of it and and just choosing to to listen and to engage. And that yeah, thank you. We'll see you next week though. Until then. Until them. Until them. Until them. them. Until them. Until them. I'm Am Perry. I am Swan. I'm not fucking spotted turkey. I'm the whiskey mutant, Eric. And we're doing this forever. Yep. Damn it, baby. Yeah, we are. Forever and ever and ever. <sighs> and this is my bourbon podcast.